starting. Remember to add a secret word. Also, don't forget to post on Twitter. Hello and welcome, all of my lovely viewers, to part two of the new player walkthrough, full walkthrough experience extravaganza. I'm so glad you guys could join us here today because we are going to continue on to do a few career agent paths. We'll see how far we go. Probably take about three hours this time. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and I guess just get right into it, shall we? 69 viewers. Nice. Also, I still need to change and fix that. Um, what was I also going to do? I was going to post on Twitter. That's right. Give me a moment. Part two of the full new show is happening now. For some exciting year agent missions. And then hit him with the Twitch. And hit him with the hashtags. And we are good to go. All right. So last time, if you joined us, let me just hit play now. Okay. Last time, if you joined us, we started the game. We made our character, Ethel Strong. Uh, we did the first tutorial missions and we started or we finished the exploration career agent mission path 07 Foix and Cumby so great to see you guys here and today i think we're going to be focusing mostly on getting through two or maybe three of the other paths we'll see how it goes all right so take two we get a biology book oh boy our daily starter gifts. Collect rewards on each of your first 15 unique days you log in. Um, so normally the game has just daily login gifts, but you also get these starter ones when you just first start. And I'm wondering if you get both of them, but I don't think you do. It's okay. These are fine. Connecting. This is a path to Titan bridging tutorial. Uh, maybe, maybe if we keep going, if we keep going, we might do that. Uh, but doubt. We're gonna go with doubt on that. Skill training completed. All right. So we're gonna check our missions here. We have a complete one mission in the Air Career Program. One out of one completed. Talk to the Explorer Career Agent mission to complete the mission. Oh, did we never actually? Wait, how do we do this? Mission basics? No. It says one out of one completed. Uh, let's go to our air career program. Maybe we just need to claim the reward. Um, so we've done a bunch of these missions. Okay, yeah, we've completed all this. We can claim this reward. Did this in our last time. Good job, us. Oh, we were, yeah, we were just tracking. That's what that is. Um, we can untrack things, hopefully. And we have our overall progress uh, down at the bottom. Whenever you do any of the exploration stuff, you get progress to this overall progress bar, and you get various rewards, and at the end, you get a big reward, which is a big bunch of skill points and some um, ship skins. Hey, Serenitov, it's this guy again. What's up? Fancy seeing you here. I had no idea you would be joining us. Um, so let's check out the air career program a little bit. Um... Right now we're just doing the career agent missions, so this will be fine. We don't need to worry too much. Things will complete. We'll get a deeper dive into that 
probably after the Sisters of Eve mission career path. Um, I do want to stop tracking this, though. How can we stop? Um, come on. Let's go into Enforcer. Let's see if we can, if we track this and then untrack this. Okay, cool. So we're not tracking anything in the Air Career Program, which is fine. We can focus more on that later. Um, let's chill in Rookie Help. See if anything useful pops up there. Oh, <laughs> would you look at that? Some skill plans. I wonder what these skill plans are. Let's um let's save a copy. Let's uh let's save some of this too. And let's look at this skill plan. Um, so skill plans, people can share their skill plans for you. Um, I will probably have some skill plans for you. It might look exactly like this one. Um, all new pilots should get this first, trust me. Okay, that seems pretty wise. Let's show the skill plan contents. Oh, there are some Omega skills in here. Um, but looks like some hole upgrades, some shield stuff, some little long range tar targeting. Um, some faster go stuff, weapon upgrades, and advanced weapon upgrades. That's good, good. Um, some shield upgrades. Oh, and a little bit of rigging skills. Oh yeah, getting your rigging skills to like level two. Hmm, very good. This is uh, this seems pretty good. And uh, especially because it only takes a few hours for each of the rigging skills. This is something that you would definitely want to use your one million free SP on, uh, because this is definitely going to be helpful in all aspects of the game, but it's also not going to be so excruciating like the Magic 14. And I believe some of these skills are also some of the Magic 14 skills. And then it looks like just the expanded version is um, if you don't have anything specific to train, then you should probably have these in your queue. Uh, it does look like we are missing quite a bit of the skill books, though. Is there a way I can, if I kick by missing skill books, we need 6 million isk. So that's going to be kind of like one of our goals, um, is to get 6 million isk, 6.5 million, so that we can buy all these, and then we can probably spend our 1 million SP on this skill plan. All right. Wow, that Commander Jameson guy seems helpful. He does seem pretty helpful. What a good guy. You hear he's a bit of a noob, though. Oh, man. If you can bear it, don't spend the one mil till you reach five mil cap for alphas. Oh, that is a true thing that we maybe need to think about. So alpha accounts are limited to five million SP in, like, natural growth. Uh, but then you can go over that amount if you have um, unallocated XP. Oh, you know what? I actually might have uh, misspoke. I think it might be if your unallocated and trained SP is equal to 5 million, you can't get any more natural SP, but you can still get unallocated SP. So I think I might have actually messed this up. I don't think we wanted to redeem the 1 million yet. But I guess we'll find out. Bow, 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 bow. Poic says, yeah, I fucked it up. Okay, that's good to know, I guess. Um, a question for chat is that if I'm at that limit, can I still eat... Um, large-scale injectors. 
and get my SP up higher that way. Yes. Okay. Cool. Because we're gonna be we're gonna be deciding if we even want to not be alpha or if we just want to stay alpha. Um, because that might be the path that we go. Okay. But career agent mission. What shall we do next first? We've done the explorer. Uh, we could do soldier portion, industrialist entrepreneur, industrial producer, or enforcer. Uh, let's do some enforcer stuff. Um, actually, let's do... We have, like, two combat things, and then we have two non-combat things. Yeah, let's do a combat thing, I guess, then. We'll do the enforcer. So, Enforcer pilots live for war, wielding unimaginable destructive forces that daily reforge the landscape of New Eden. Join this career if you enjoy lasers, missiles, and generally making sure that someone else has a really bad day. Except for the Enforcer is the PvE path, so that someone else is just, you know, an NPC, generally. They have a recommended skill plan, which we were training last we left off. We just put all of the, like, certified plans in. So we've completed the Air Caldari Explorer. We have not completed the Enforcer. We're three days away from that. We completed the Entrepreneur Industrialist. Uh, looks like we're pretty close on the Producer. Um, and four days on the Soldier of Fortune. But that's fine. We'll just keep continuing to train those. Looks like we're training industry to four. Uh, sure, why not? Why not? I would probably generally recommend for actual new players to... You don't really need to like learn all of these um, paths. I would just, I guess, focus on the path that you like the most. Um, and then maybe branch out into the other paths if you think you might want to pursue that kind of gameplay. Um, but they're all pretty simple, easy trains, so they're all generally going to be pretty good. Not too much of a waste. And they'll also all probably pretty much help each other. So yeah. Hey, spooky. <laughs> First? Uh, not quite. Damn. So yeah, let's do the Enforcer one. Talk to Ikunaki Yebroa. Cash flow for Capsuleers. And I need to mark this stream marker. Oh, why did that not work? I'll just do it this way. Oh wait, I can do marker with description and call this... One of ten. Okay. Is thermodynamics in there? That's a great question. Um, is general must-haves. Let's see if thermo's in here. Can we search? Yeah. Uh, it is not. Um... Is it in here? It is not. So I'm saying you don't need thermodynamics. But thermodynamics is a really good skill. <laughs> um, especially just one point of it. Because that allows you to overheat it. Um... We're going to... Oh, it probably takes... Oh, yeah, it... Yeah, okay. It takes 6 million isk to buy, which is probably why it's not on the list. It should be on the... Ma the expanded, not maxed. Oh, well. Um, We'll get thermo later. Okay. Here is a mission suited for someone of your caliber. Grista Thrugs 
um, which is a um, pirate faction, Garistas. They're harassing miners in a nearby asteroid belt. Let's clean up the area. Make sure you keep your target within your weapons range and try not to give them a stationary target. All right, we need to clear the pirates of the asteroid belt. We'll go ahead and undock now. And we're going to be doing it in our Heron, because that's the best ship we have available right now. Actually, we probably have a better ship, but we're already out in space. Warp drive active. Uh, let's move our inventory over something like this. Feel free to move these windows however you think is best. Um, later in this series, I will get a better overview, one that I like a lot. Um, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to keep it fairly simple here for now. We're going to slowly add on to it throughout time. Alright, so we got our evil guy here. We can right hold right click on him in space, get the wheel here, or we can right click him on the overview, get the wheel there. And we're going to go up to this top right one, which is orbit. So we're going to try and orbit this guy at 1000 meters. You can pull up further and get, uh, you can choose how far you want to orbit him. But let's just do 1000. Again, we're always going to put on our afterburner pretty much always when we're in combat. We're going to, you know, approach him. And we need to get into our weapons optimal range, or at least kind of close to that. So here you can see that our civilian Gatling railgun optimal is 5,200, fall off is 7,300. So we're doing about 50% of our damage at that 7,300 mark. We're doing, um, or we can do 100% of our damage at 5,200 or less. Optimal always means that number or less. There is another factor in um, damage, and that is tracking, how fast you can track your target. And that is um, dictated by this like angular number, your angular velocity to the target. Um, and you want that to be as little as possible. However, the lower it is for your target, the lower the target has on for you. So you kind of have to decide if you have better tracking guns than them or less better tracking guns than them where you want to be. And missiles also um, are at work differently, which we'll get to when we start firing missiles. All right, so there's a few more hostiles here. They show up on our overview. Let's go ahead and orbit them. And we are going to use a hotkey. We're going to hold down the control key. And we're going to click on the overview. And that will target these enemies. So we can target both of these enemies. And it seems that I put my chat window where my targeting is. So we're going to go run into the rock. But that's fine. Our autopilot systems will be able to navigate around this rock. It would be better, more efficient and everything if we manually piloted, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. Um, and we are going to, instead of moving our target anchors, we're going to move our chat window to over here. All right. So here we can click on the, the target that we want to look at and fire on, and we can use our Gatling railgun start shooting at them. And again, because it doesn't look like we're taking a whole lot of damage, we can reduce our tracking, which a way to reduce your or reduce your angular velocity, a way to reduce your angular velocity is by going further orbiting further away from the target. So we're going to orbit this guy at about 4700. Again, if you remember, our um, optimal is 5,200, so that's less than that number. And we can start shooting him, and we're going to be doing even more damage. <laughs> Alright, here's another guy. Rinse and repeat. Go ahead and orbit him. We decided that 4,700 was good. Control click on him and tar start targeting him. We always have our afterburner on. And 
because we're not really using any ammo or anything with this gun, it's a training gun, we're going to go ahead and just start firing it now so you guys can see that it misses completely, misses completely, because we are way too far out for when any of our shots will miss. We'll probably start hitting around like 10 kilometers. And then it'll get better and better as we get closer. <laughs> All right, we're getting close to that 10. Should start maybe getting some shots in. There we go. And you can see that there's a range of damage that's happening. And that it's all a big calculation dictated by your range, your tracking, uh, and a little bit of randomness. And also what your like gun is. Alright, so we've killed all of these pirates by the asteroid belt. Good job, us. We can go ahead and dock back up and complete this mission. Orb drive active. Um, and because we don't really expect to do any scanning for the time being, we're going to go ahead and get rid of our probe scanner window. Just close it there. Remember that the uh, hotkey for it is Alt-P for probes, or you can also go down to this window here, uh, look for scanners, click scanners, and go Talking to probe scanner. Requested. That's a way to bring that back up. If you ever don't Talking know where accept. anything is, you all you need to really remember is the help pointer. So if you go to your Neocom window, also known as the hamburger menu, also known as the top left button, the Eve button, uh, if you go there and you go to utilities... Hey bitch, you are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. Good old ads. Um, but for the YouTube, we're going to continue onwards. So you go to utilities and then pointer window. And then you can search for pretty much anything in the pointer window, and you will get a link that will point to it. So, because we're in a station, probe window won't work, but probe... Um, so, any of these will probably work. Uh, if we just click it... Yeah, so we need to be in space. We'll just wait till we're in space to do this one. But let's go ahead and finish this mission. We'll start conversation. Complete the mission. Request the next one. Make a marker. Uh, two, uh... Alright. So the Griestas now have kidnapped one of the miners and are demanding a hostage swap. They want the one responsible for their comrades' deaths, and apparently they have no idea you are a trained capsuleer. Go teach them a permanent lesson. Alright, so the reason we were able to kill those other guys so easily is because we were a capsuleer in the lore. Um, which just means that we control the ship with our minds much better than regular pilots will. We do still have other, like, crew on a lot of our ships, um, but we are, like, the command center. And because we connect with it, we, we uh, drift with it. We, as capsuleers, are much better at controlling them and generally have the upper hand in combats. Alright, so we're going to eliminate the pirates and rescue the civilian miners that they are holding as a captive. The civilian will be transferred into your cargo once you have destroyed the pirates. Alright, easy peasy. And our reward will be a Merlin, which is a little combat frigate. So we've accepted this mission. Let's see if we have any ships that would be more suitable. Um, nope, this one seems like a fine choice. So the Heron is technically an exploration frigate. If we right click it, we can show info. And then if we go to the traits or description, both will kind of give us an idea. Traits, if we look at the bonuses per level, it's going to get a bonus to the core and combat scan proner strength and a reduction in salvaging. Um, generally, these ships don't actually salvage, but that's kind of just like legacy old bonuses and its roll bonus is that it gets a five plus bonus to the relic and data analyzer virus strength you can also read its description 
and it says that it has a good computer and electronic system, giving it the option of partaking in electronic warfare, but it has relatively poor defenses and limited weaponry, so it's more commonly used for scouting and exploration. So that kind of gives us an idea of what this frigate does. But for now, it's a handy fine ship. It's got lots of slots, lots of equipment layout area module slots. So we like it. All right, so now we are back in space. We can go ahead and go to the top left. Our opportunities we're tracking, and we can warp to the site. And while we are warping, we can click on this button here, which tells us that if we want to go to any of these probe stuff, we go to the probe formation. Uh, I was clicking in. Uh, then scanners, and then probe scanner. So, and that's how a helpful tool that can help locate whatever you're looking for. So if we do like fitting, um, fitting, management or fitting, we can just say that, oh, it's right here, easy peasy. Uh, and again, that's the hamburger or neocom menu, and then utilities, and then a pointer window. All right, so we've landed here on the site. We see three bad guys. Let's go ahead and hold right click on them and orbit them. We decided that 4500 was about right. Turn on our afterburner. Your afterburner was going to turn off every time you warp. Um, some things turn off after you warp, some things turn off after... Well, everything turns off after you dock to, to a station. And you can also, like... This is a little advanced tech. You can right click your modules and kind of set if they auto repeat or not. So maybe they'll only do one cycle and then turn off if you want them to. All right, so we're approaching this guy. We're gonna just control click to target him. And we're gonna just start firing our laser. Capsules are essentially JP from Grandma's Boy. Oh, okay. I don't I don't get the reference, but I'll believe it. Uh, what's your in-game name on that character? Um, I'm not going to tell you. So do not. Under, do not send this character anything. This is eventually a spy character. So please do not ruin it. Yeah, do don't don't do anything like that. I really need to put up a sign. All right, so we just locked a bunch of these guys because we know we're going to have to kill them. And it's kind of rinse and repeat here. Let me make a text thing. Please do not... This... Please do not um, inter interact with this. All right. Let's just put this. Jeez. Let me Alright. Let's make it yellow. Uh not that yellow. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's get back to fighting. Or bright blue. Yeah, yellow's fine. We'll contrast against the space colors. Mm, true, true, true. 
Yeah. We'll make it blue. Much better. <laughs> God damn it, Gummy Bear. If you want to just ruin content, sure. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and see. So like the big goal is to successfully infiltrate and take over some corp. Preferably an evil corp. But we'll see how that goes. We we might join some Nullsec alliances. Do some F1 monkeying. We'll see where our life takes us. All right, got all those guys. We can go ahead and dock up. Uh, technically, there is some like stuff to loot in these wrecks, uh, but it is very not worthwhile. So we're going to just leave it in there. You got to realize that your time is valuable um, and you don't want to waste it getting useless junk over and over and over again. There are some wrecks that are worth looting, but just not that one. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. We'll talk about later when a wreck is worth looting. All right, let's go ahead and start the conversation. And we have completed this mission. Good job, us. Let's request the next. Uh, three of ten. All right, so we are being granted some actual guns, not just civilian guns. We're going to be given two of these Gatling rails, um, so that will be nice. And she has something for us. Hey, YOLO Gaming with the big raid. Thank you so much. How you guys doing? Welcome in. If you guys don't know, my name is Nth Dimensional. And today we are doing something pretty cool. We're, we're in the midst of a series of a full new player walkthrough experience. We started an account last stream, and we are going through very explicitly, slowly, and talking about basically every button press that I do, why and how, and uh, yeah. If you have any questions, please ask them. I would love, love, love to answer them right now. Um, and other than that, come along with the ride. Enjoy. You might you might even learn something new, too. What did you guys get up to, Yolo Gaming? You're not a new bro yourself? No, I am not. Sorry sorry if I tried to deceive you. I am not a new bro. Um, you're doing combat now, but I have some Explo questions. When is that segment? Uh, the Explo, we did the Explo career agent last time. So if you check out on Twitch, actually, okay. Yeah, so the VOD is on Twitch down below. The VOD will be on YouTube coming out tomorrow in about 21-ish hours. It's scheduled. Um, but yeah, it's all timestamped. You can go check it out, and you can have your exploration questions answered there. At least the very basic exploration questions. All right, so we're doing cash flow for capsuleers. And she has something for us. The miners are happy, but now the station owners are not. A Grista pirate has stolen some sensitive documents from there, and I'm tasked with quietly resolving the matter. I'm entrusting this with you. Get those documents back for me. So we need to destroy the runner drone and retrieve the secret documents and report back to our agent. So we're going to accept this. We can close this. And now we have received a new ship, a Merlin. Um from our successful last mission. So we're going to uh, open the fitting window with Alt F 
Alt F. You can also click the fitting window here, or you can use your pointer window if you don't know where it is. Uh, and we're going to open our inventory with Alt C for character, I guess. Um, there is also the inventory button here. So now that we have both of those things open, we are going to go ahead, and because we have no rigs, this is fine to do. If you do have rigs, you'll get a message about this. But you can right-click this, and we are going to get into a new ship. So for right now, we're only going to be operating in one ship. So we're going to hit Strip Fitting. So this will ask me, do we really want to remove all the modules? We hit Yes. And then we are going to be getting into our Merlin. And if we, again, right-click and show info on the Merlin, we can kind of see what kind of ship it is. The Merlin is the most powerful combat frigate of the Kaldari. Tech 1. <laughs> uh, its role has evolved through the years, and while its defenses have always remained exceptionally strong for a Kaldari vessel, its offensive capabilities have evolved from versatile jack-of-all-trade attack patterns into focused and deadly gunfire tactics. The Merlin's primary aim is to have its turrets punch holes in opponents' holes. We can look at its traits, and we can see that its bonuses gets nice and simple bonuses, small hybrid turret damage, and it gets shield resistances. You can also hover over the ship characteristics, and we can see that this is a small ship, so it's primarily fitted with small modules. It's good for combat, so it's got good damage and defenses, recommended for heavy frontline brawling. It's using hybrid turrets. Again, when we talked about the races, there are four main weapon systems, but there's kind of seven. Um, so there's hybrid turrets, projectile turrets, lasers. Those are going to be your turrets. You have missiles. You have drones. You have precursor weapons, which is sort of technically a turret. Um, and you have chain lightning. Don't worry about that one. But this one mainly uses hybrid turrets, which we'll get into the differences about what all the turret differences are later. <laughs> um, and it is a shield ship because it's Kaldari. All right. So now that we have double clicked it to unpack it, we can double click it again to hop into it. Our fitting window will change here. And then we can go to our item hanger. Alternatively, you can go to the um, inventory panel here and then choose instead of what's in the ship's inventory ha hanger, you can go to item hanger. I don't really like this that much. I just use the inventory. Most people, I think, still just use the inventory. This is a new feature, so I'm trying it out a little bit, but I don't know about it. Um, so now... We're going to, this is giving us a little tutorial message, so we're going to listen to it. It says, drag this module to a highlighted slot in the fitting window. So we're going to just drag it over, and it's going to fit like that. We're going to need to drag our new Gatling rails as well. Um, and it looks like we have, so we have, we're going to get rid of the civilian Gatling rail gun. And we are going to instead put all of the same better upgraded 75 millimeter Gatling rail ones in. Um, you can tell it's uh, upgrades. What is an upgrade? What is not an upgrade? That's a great question. For the most part, almost all occasions, civilian things are the worst. After that, it's going to be something that is a basic name. Something like 75mm Gatling Rail 1. There is also a 75mm Gatling Rail 2. That's going to be called Tech 2. Um, that is obviously an upgrade. But then there are also, within Tech 1, there is side grades. Little different modified versions. And they affect different things. So you're generally going to see something like scoped, meaning it can shoot out a little bit further, or you're going to see, okay, we'll just, so if we click show info here, we can see the variations tab. And so we can see these are the different 75 millimeter variations. We can see that there's a Gatling rail, a carbide rail, a scout acceleration cannon, a compressed coil gun, and a prototoss Gauss cannon. 
And there's also all these faction things, which are also upgrades. These are all the same gun, but they're a little bit different. You can compare all of them. And you get this big old compare window. And you can right click. Where do you do this? Where do you do only the differences? Oh, this um, this little triple dot here. If you left click on it, you can select only show attributes that differ. And then this will shorten this list a lot. And then you can like say which one uses less computer space. You can figure out if you're trying to fit a ship. We'll talk about fitting ships more correctly later. Really, this talk should be um, at that area. But damage modifier is a pretty good indication of like what is the best upgrade because dam more damage, more better. And then if we click on this column, we can sort it by this number. You can see that the faction guns are generally quite good. Um, and then this variation gun. So this prototype Gauss Cannon, because it is the same damage modifier as the T2, you can kind of start to assume that like that's the big hitting one, but because it is still tech one, it's going to have some drawbacks for that higher damage output. Um, and then just tech two is going to generally be like your standard upgrade. You're going to use just a lot of tech two stuff as you upgrade your skills. Um, so if we click on optimal range, we can just we can just click on all these. Uh, don't worry about these, and don't worry about this. Really, it's just going to be these four is what is most important. So the optimal range is. Let's see what the drawback up here is. The this just seems better. Okay, so this is the part where I tell you, Eve doesn't make sense. In lots of areas and lots of places, for some reason, unless someone can tell me differently, I think the 75mm prototype Gauss gun would be the best upgrade for this specific module. Um, until you get into, like, specializations, which are even more skills. Yeah, no T2 skills or ammo. Yeah. Also, yeah, that's like another good factor. The Tech 2 guns and the Faction guns can use Tech 2 ammo, which is an upgraded ammo, which is a lot of times useful, but not always the times useful, because EVE is complex. Um, so that's enough tangenting for there right now. We we just know that civilian is bad. Anything that is not a civilian is going to be better. And we'll get to a point where we can kind of just start fitting ships on purpose when we get to a trade hub and we can buy things that will be useful and standard issue pretty much. But for now we're just kind of scrounging and using what we can. So what else can we fit on this ship here? Let's use this. So we filled up all of our top slots. We can now filter for mid slots and see what our mid slot options are. We have a medium shield extender. That seems probably pretty good. Um, we have a bunch of the analyzer stuff and the scan range finder and the survey scanner. That all seems like exploration stuff. So we're not going to use any of that. What we are instead going to do is put on a micro warp drive, which is, so when we put this on, you notice some things. It used a lot of our power grid, and also it says that our capacitor depletes in three minutes. So we can hit the simulate button here. I guess this is the fitting talk, talk time, at least beginning fitting talk. Um, so when we put this on, we can see when it's active, it's green. It's simulating that it is active. And we have three minutes till our capacitor runs out. Your capacitor is like your ship's battery. It recharges on its own. Um, but this thing is using more energy than it recharges. 
So if we turn it off, um, we can see that we're stable. So this is a sometimes use module. And now you're asking, what is a micro warp drive? I'm so glad you asked. So a micro warp drive is like a very powerful afterburner. It speeds up the ship pretty much five times base speed. That does vary, but it's a rough estimate. Um, but it also makes you a lot easier to hit. Um, and it also uses a whole lot of capacitor to use. So you only want to use it like when you're closing distance, not when you're too much in combat. So with that, we're going to be doing what is called a double prop fit. Except for now when we hover over this, we can see that our power grid, or if we even just put it on, we can see that our power grid is over. So we can't actually have both of these modules on the ship because we're using too much power. This is where fitting um, efficiency is, is quite helpful. So we can see that our medium shield extender uses actually a whole lot of power. You can see that big red chunk that's solid. That's how much it's using. And the blue is uh, computer power. So various modules use different amounts of computer power or power grid. So we weren't really feeling like we were taking a whole lot of damage. And I feel like it would be faster and better if we were able to have these two things here. So let's go ahead and remove our shield. Oh, we can just uh, click unfit module. I guess we can't drag it over here for some reason. That's a little silly. Uh, but now we have a dual prop fit. And we are now going to look into our low slots because we don't really care about any of these mid slots. Our low slots, we have three nanofiber internal structures, and we have three low slots. So that's pretty cool. What does this do? I'm so glad you asked. We can right click it, we can show info, we can read its description. It says that it replaces some of the heavier structure components with lighter, more fragile material, increases the ship's velocity, and improves maneuverability at the expense of hull strength. And it says a penalty. Using more than one type of this module or similar modules that affect the same attributes of the ship will be penalized. So let's talk about um, what now diminishing returns. That's the word I'm looking for. So this game features diminishing returns on multiple. Whenever a a attribute is modified more than once. It will take the lower modification and um, that word that I just said, uh, diminish return it. So it will be less effective uh, than using just one attribute modifier. So if we actually put this on, we can see this little um, notice. So these are fitting notices. It says, oh, we have insuffi insufficient required charges or our Gatling guns because they have the little exclamation mark notice on them when I hover over this. And we have diminishing returns. So this will give you a um, description if you hover over it. It says using more than one module would affix it. Uh, while the first module applies 100, the second one applies 87% and the third one 57. And the fourth one is like 30 some. Um, and it keeps going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. So uh, we can see that our inertia modifier and our maximum velocity are suffering that because both of our um, nanofibers. So we can also, on the right hand sa side, we can lower or do a drop down on all these um, stats. You're pretty much always going to want to have these dropped down because you will get useful information. And we can see that if we unfit this for a second, and if we hover over it, we can see there will be green numbers and red numbers. Green numbers mean something is improving. Red numbers mean something is uh, deproving. Got it. <laughs> um, and so we can then hover over these and figure out what it is. So our maximum velocity, our inertia modifier, and our align time all are going to be positively increased. However, our structure 
is going to be our structure defense is going to be reduced, which will also reduce our effective hit points, which is an uh, average kind of calculation based on your raw HPs and your resistance profile, which is this grid here. So let's go ahead and put this back on. And what we are doing with this kind of configuration is called speed tanking. So we are ideally going fast enough and maneuverable enough that the enemy will not be able to hit us. We're gonna have high angular velocity while we will still be able to track them because theoretically we have turrets that have good tracking. Um, so yeah. And it did said that we need ammo. We have a notification that we have insignificant required charges. So these guns do require ammo and the best way to see what ammo they require is probably some kind of filter. Oh, here we go. A filter. Nice. Um, so that's actually one thing this little window is going to be quite helpful for. If you don't by heart know your ammo types, you can just filter for what gun you're looking for. And then we are going to... We can move it over here, and this will give us one load of it here. Oh, actually, I've misspoke a little bit. We were in the simulation window, so none of that was actually happening. We were just simulating what would happen if we did put stuff there. However, there should be a baton that will be able to let us fit. So we want to put all this here, and we want to put the rest into our cargo hold. Um which is just like, we'll say 2000 and see how this works out. So now that we have simulated a fit that we like, we should be able to go to this wrench icon, this browser icon, and there is a button here that says fit ship. You could also just do all of this without, outside of the simulation, um, but when you get into more complex things, using a simulator helps out Hey much. bitch, you are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now. So pause your fucking game. All right, but we're not pausing for YouTube. So now we can hit fit ship. It will try to do its best here. It says that the following items could not be fitted. The 600 antimatter charges. That's because we loaded a group of them. Each magazine is 200, so that's where that 600 is, and then the spare goes into the cargo hole. We do have the option of buying all here, but we don't really care that much. We're fine, so we're just going to hit close. Now when we hit exit simulation, we should see that our ship has correctly fitted all of these things on it, and it has the remaining... Um, oh, okay, the way it did it is that it first put all the charges into the cargo hold, and not in the uh, active modules, but that's easy enough fix. We just drag this over the ship when we're not in simulation, and then it will automatically load those, and we're good to go. Whew. Now our Merlin is ready to rock. Let's go ahead and undock. And let's warp to sight. Warp drive active. So now that we have um, multiples of the same kind of gun, you can see we have three of the same here, same guns, same everything. Uh, what we want to do is have a simple and easy way to alpha fire all of them at once. And there's a handy dandy button here that says group all weapons. If you click this, it will group all the weapons that it can, all the similar same weapons. And then here we got all this big group. If you ever want to ungroup, you can. You can just keep clicking this button as to your heart's content. But let's group all of our weapons into one button. All right, so we have a bunch of rats here. But our mission is to destroy the runner drone, as it highlighted here for us here. Let's go ahead and orbit the runner drone and click on it. And we're going to use our afterburner, because it's pretty close. It looks like it's getting close to us. And we're going to start shooting at it. 
Again, let's check our optimal and fall off. Our optimal is now 3,000, so much less than our civilian. Our fall off is a little less than our civilian. But we're going to be doing a whole lot more damage. So we just blew that guy up. Then go ahead and dock up. We got the secret documents. So the the career agent missions, kind of a lot of them, or like just like a lot of the story-ish missions like to put stuff in your cargo instead of you having to loot it. Um, and so you just want to make sure if you get the item, if it doesn't immediately go into your cargo or if it doesn't immediately go into your cargo. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, we can start the conversation. We can complete this mission. We can request the next. Um, let's put a... All right, she's got just the thing that we want. I expect we'll get a chance before long to hunt down the pirate who escaped. Meanwhile, I have located an illegal Stargate hidden by an infer, infer, in, in, interference from a large dead space field, and I want you to go scout the area. All right. So let's go uh, scout that area. Undock. Drive active. Let's also talk about moving modules now. So if we click and hold on any of our modules in this little grid here, we can see that we can move them to places. And I personally like to have, actually I like the micro warp drive here on control two, but I like my main propulsion module on two and my main gun on one. Or it says that her sisters have found nothing in the area other than this lone stargate partially hidden in a cluster of rock formation. I would advise you to proceed with care. Smuggler gates such as these are rarely left undefended. Your agent instructed you to approach the stargate. Be ready to retreat should the need arise. Alright. So here we're looking for the stargate. It's all highlighted for us. Let's go ahead and approach it. And it's 30 kilometers, and there's, like, no enemies, so, like, I know it said be prepared to leave, but we're going to hit our micro-warp drive. We're going to go zoom, zoom, zoom much faster than we otherwise would. Let's just do one burst of it, so click it again to uh, decycle it. And it will stop when it finishes its burst cycle. So here we are. Look at this wonderful little Stargate construction. Oh no, something's going on. Looks like we're taking some gases damage. Let's get out of here. Drive active. So we're going to go ahead and hit dock, and we'll warp and dock away. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, we can start the conversation. And our reward is an afterburner, but we already have one of those, so we don't need another one for right now. It's good to have a backup, though. Or your ship might explode, and it's very important for you to have a backup ship immediately ready when that happens. Sorry about the cloud that damaged your ship. You might try fitting that afterburner I gave you. They're very useful when you need to get out of an area quickly. Sure are. Um, Alright, she's got something for us. 
After you left the area, our cleanup crew found a message from the pirate Talmar. He wants to meet you in person with no backup at a small repair outpost in the system. Be careful, you don't have to kill the man, but he's assassinated people I've known, so his death wouldn't be any great loss. I'll provide you with a civilian kinetic shield hardener. It will improve your shield resistance against kinetic damage, which is what the Garista's missiles primarily dish out. Yeah, so she brings up a good point, is that various weapon platforms will generally do a specific type of damage or have an option of a few specific types of damages. Hybrids being thermal and kinetic. Um, and the Grista's missiles, they like to fire kinetic missiles, because they like to. Alright, so we're going to accept this. And she did give us this civilian kinetic hardener. Let's go ahead and fit that bad boy up, assuming that we have power and computer. It's a mid-slot module, and it fits in just perfectly. Let's go ahead and warp to the site. Okay. So she gave us an okay. active module, an active kinetic shield hardener. And when I say active, I mean that you have to click it for it to start working. And it will use capacitor to do so. So we can go ahead and click this. And generally these sh shield hardeners don't really use basically any capacitor to use. Um, so feel free to turn it on pretty much all the time. All right, we got this pithy plunder. Let's go ahead and orbit 1,000 because we have a closer um, turrets now that have an optimal of 3,000. And we can go ahead and click on this. Um, actually, we're not going to click on that. Uh, let's target our enemy. And then we're going to press 1. We're going to press the 1 key number because it is now time for us to start to use hotkeys for our module activation now that we're getting a number of them. So let's go ahead and press 1 and start shooting. Saad's so talking about the Grishas. We're here in the heart of Kaldari State, but we always keep an eye out for possible additions to our fleet. You state pilots are just so much better trained than most of the scum we have back home. So I give you this proposition. Visit our agents to join our cause. Earn wealth beyond your wildest dreams. The stuck-up corporations here in Kaldari Space have nothing to offer you that we can't double or even triple. They hoard their isk like rats, the poor sods. They hire to do their dirty work, only get scraps dropped through dozens of layers of bureaucracy. You're worth more than that. Join us to be rid of the greed and backstabbing of capitalism, to find a purpose for your life and a goal to achieve alongside the rest of our mighty host. You have many days to consider our proposal, but first you must complete another test. When you are ready, attack our fleet, and if you leave this place with your life, then we will know we are ready for what lies ahead. Alright, so here, um, we can actually see that we are out tracking ourselves. So we're well within our optimal range, but we're not really doing that much damage. And that's because we're going too fast, actually. So we're going to turn off our afterburner. And then we should start to see that we do more damage because we're going slower. Our angular is just too high for this tracking speed. It does also mean that we're taking a little bit more damage, but that's okay. We're still missing, and we're grazing. Grazing isn't good. Grazing isn't good. Grazing just isn't good. All right. So we have successfully fit incorrectly. <laughs> um, we're going too fast. We're not getting good um, damage in a orbiting fashion. So she says, nicely done. Perhaps we'll meet another day. For now, I'll be making my way back in my capsule. All right. Because she is also a capsuleer. So let's go ahead and dock. And yeah, so there are the four main empires of EVE, which you can start off as. 
And then there are a number of pirate factions and also weird factions. Um, you can sort of ally yourself, actually ally yourself, with the angels or the garistas in a faction warfare thing. Um, and you can be pirates. You can help out uh, the pirates and take places in this like tug-of-war kind of king-of-the-hill system for PvP. Um, or you can kind of be, you can also be al aligned in faction warfare with one of the four major empires. You can also just say, fuck all that noise and not really truly align yourself with anyone except for like through your reputation. And you can kind of just do your own thing as well. Let's go ahead and start this conversation. We can complete this mission and get the next one. We managed to track Talmer to a small pirate outpost in the system. Time to finish this, destroy the outpost, and hopefully she will perish along with it. And and our reward will be a limited ocular filter. Interesting. We'll talk about that when we receive it. Mm -hmm. But we do need to change our fitting because we have realized that we're going too fast. So we're going to just drag this um, hmm. Well, let's drag an afterburner off. Honestly, we want to drag a nanofiber off too. Let's put a shield extender on. All right, so our power grid, we have 0.8 power grid left. That seems pretty good. We can use our microwave drive to quickly get places. Um, and if we simulate, this is, because we're like so new, this is actually using, oh no, now we're stable. We were a little bit unstable, it looked like, with our afterburner on, with this on as well. Um, but yeah, this will be fine. Let's go ahead and undock. And that shield extender will just give us a whole bunch of extra shield HP. Oh look, another Merlin. Orb drive active. And that is another player right there. A real life player. All these people right here. Alright, so we're at a acceleration gate. We already know how to use these from previously. You just right click and hit activate gate. We do have to be within the circle or within the sphere of the gate, which this looks like it's going to be 2000. And then it will say establishing warp vector. And now because we only have this propulsion module, we're going to move this up to number two. We can turn this on. And we need to kill the hostiles, so he's pretty close. Start shooting them, even though we're a little too far out. It says, intruders, don't let them get away. Looks like the next acceleration gate is guarded. You have to take care of the guards before they can get through. So yeah, this is locked. A lot of times the acceleration gates into the next rooms will be locked um, until you kill all of the enemies or maybe a specific enemy. It kind of depends on what's going on. So let's do a pulse of our micro warp drive, which we probably didn't need to. We're getting a little too close, a little too fast. But, so this is where we overshoot him, which is also a thing you don't really want to do. Looks like more people spawned. It's getting hairy out here. And so now I'm going to show you how to target multiple things at once. If you hold down the control, and then you click and drag in space, 
over these things you can draw a box. When you let go of click, it will target things in the box. I'm going to start shooting these guys. Because we got three big old guns, they are just falling like flies. We're in our optimal, and we're not untracking. Just do the box again, get these last two. All right. Pretty easy peasy. So instead of right clicking as well, oh, it looks like we're missing this guy a lot. So instead of orbiting this guy, now that there's only one guy, we're actually going to go to the bottom right. It says keep at range. We're going to say keep at range a thousand. And this is going to pretty much just get us uh, in front of him. We're going to do our best to like stay like on his butt. And that worked just a treat. There's some more guys here. Let's go ahead and right, uh, control click them to target them. Um, and we can do control shift click on this portrait here to untarget this wreck. We don't really need to target this wreck, so let's do that. And we're also now going to use our QWE keys. That is our approach, orbit, and keep at range keys. They will go to our default values. Our default values are fine for what they are right now. You can change these default values, which we'll talk about later. But let's go ahead and do W for orbit. You can see orbit here. And we're going to just click on this portrait. And that is even faster than doing the right click thing. Um, and then we can just press one to shoot at him. W to click on this guy, one to shoot at him, and W to click on this guy, and one to shoot at him. Alright, now it looks like all the baddies are dead. Again, there's not really anything useful in these wrecks right now, so we're going to right click the activation gate and activate gate. And because this is pretty far away, let's go ahead and do a pulse, one cycle of our micro warp drive. Okay, so we click it and then click it again. When it's flashing red, it means it will no longer cycle after it finishes its current cycle. Warp drive active. And vroom, vroom, vroom. Looks like we found the pirate outpost. Your instructions were to destroy it. I would recommend leaving the loot in the wreck after you obliterate the structure. You would not want to be caught trying to jump between systems with contraband in your cargo hold. The local security forces do not look kindly upon such activity. All right. So here is the Greasta's outpost. Uh, you can also, again, just use the control drag. And we're going to click E for keep at range. Keep at range. Uh, and then click on this outpost, uh, which we will start approaching it, and let's fire upon it. Looks like some baddies don't like that we're doing this. We're just going to control click on all these guys. But let's focus on this outpost first. We have enough shield buffer with our shield extender that we're not really any re in any real danger as of yet. If we wanted to reduce the damage that we were taking, we could orbit this thing. But right now we are keeping it range 1,000, so we're pretty much being stationary. Which means everyone is getting really good shots at us. But it's fine. We're also getting really good shots on this thing. We're penetrating it. Penetrating it. All right. And we don't have to kill these guys, and they're not really going to do anything for us. So let's go active. ahead and warp off and complete the mission. I need to get a drink real quick, um, so I'll be right back. Accepted. I'm just getting a drink.
All right, I have returned. Hey, Snooks. Start this conversation and complete mission. All right. So she has given us, let's request the next mission. Um, here's a mission suited for someone of your caliber. After Tamir escaped the, your attack, he retaliated by commanding, commandeering a state Navy ship meaning manning it with his own crew and starting a campaign of terror in the Constellation. I want you to head out there and kill them all. Moreover, I can provide you with a small shield booster one if you're willing to take this on. It should help you against any damage thrown your way by Tamir and his ally ships. Destroy the pirates of the convoy ambush site. If you get low on hit points, simply warp out and regenerate and then warp back in. She's giving us a small shield booster. Let's go ahead and accept. Close this window. Go to fitting window. And we are going to put in this small shield booster. Um, however, it looks like we are unable to bring it online because we need shield operation level one. Let's go to our skills and go to shield operation. We need level one. That takes 17 minutes. We're going to just buy it and start training it um, I don't think we'll actually need it right now and plus it would be it would it needs to use some power grid so we're not gonna worry about it and we're just gonna rely on our buffer tank instead of our active tank. So what this does, the small shield booster, is that it uh, cycles, it uses capacitor, and it recharges your shield every time it cycles. But we can put it on our ship and just offline it. It's fine, even though we don't have the skill. Um, what we want to look at is this limited ocular filter, however. So this is a implant. Um, and what implants are is your character has 10 slots in their head for implants. Um, they can also take drugs, which take various slots, but don't worry about that right now. Um, the only reason we're worried about implants right now is because they give us one. This, if we right click and show info, it says that it gives us plus one bonus to perception. What is perception? I'm so glad you asked, except for I'm not, because I hate it and they should be changing the system here soon, TM. Um, your character has attributes. They start out with 20 points and then 19 in charisma. You can remap these points to be how more or less however you want, min-max yourself. Uh, it's a very tricky situation. Um, you might mess up, and you only get one remap every year, I believe. So be very, very careful if you're doing things like this. It could really hurt you. And what these points do is that the more points you have, the quicker you train those types of skills. Um, so, like, perception skills are going to be... Uh, if we go to our skill system. If we hover over this, armor skills are going to be like intelligence memory generally. Uh, Corporation is going to be memory charisma. Drones are going to be memory perception. Uh, electronics is intelligence. So on and so forth. Um, there is a third party tool called Evemon that can help you figure out how you want to do this correctly. If you do choose to dive into this, Thank I don't necessarily that. recommend doing it or caring about it. And as I said before, it should hopefully soon be reworked. Come on CCP, we've been waiting a while. But they give us this little implant here. We're gonna go ahead and right click it. We're gonna hit plug in. And it says the implants are lost when unplugged or when you die. So now that there there's an even greater cost to when we get potted. So when you die is when you get potted, uh, which is what we saw in that tutorial when they blew up our bot. And then our body was floating in space. Are you sure you want to use this one now? Yes. 
and then we can see in our augmentations we now have plus one to our um, perception and these are called training clones training pods which we'll get into more later when we have some more iskies uh thank you so much for that raid sorry i was on a little bit of a talky talk so i just ignored you for a sec but thank you so much for the raid squeeze caffeinator how you guys doing did you have a lovely stream if you guys don't know my name is nth dimensional um eve player extraordinaire we're just gonna go with that now and we are doing a full walkthrough of a new player experience i am trying my best to explain every little thing i do in full pretty excruciating detail which means we'll have a lot of tangents and talks and stuff like that but it is hopefully for the good understanding of new bros who should watch this series um yeah i know it's a lot but it, it's it's been good so far and it's just been that. fun thank you for the follow. you did have a good stream awesome what'd you get up to I hope you guys enjoy um, watching this stream Hey, here. bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. That is incredibly annoying. Um, are you guys watching an ad? All you guys, all you new raiders? I guess I'll talk to you after the ad's over. No? Okay, cool. I, maybe Twitch was useful this time. Ads are dumb. I sure do hate them. Oh, wait. No, you have Twitch Prime. You have Twitch Prime! I do love Twitch Prime. I have it, too. Orb drive active. Turbo. That's what I meant. Twitch Turbo! Because Tur Prime is the free sub. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just gonna click W to orbit. We're gonna control click, control click. We're gonna read. She says, "Well, look what the cat dragged in. Come to avenge these pathetic civilians we butchered. I'd like to see you try." And we can start shooting. Oh, it seems I locked my cat in my room. Um, so everyone gets a quick cat cam, and then I will let them be free. Kitty meow meow. All right, be free, kitty meow meow. All right, I'm going to open the door for me. <laughs> that looks like your kitty cat. No, he's my kitty cat. All right. W to orbit. One to shoot. We're going to just hit W to orbit this guy. We're going to start track or, um, locking all of them and start shooting them. Kind of rinse and repeat. We have a very good ship for what's going on right now with our triple shooty shoots. So it's working out pretty nicely as long as we get close enough to him. Oh, it looks like we're orbiting this guy. So we should probably shoot this guy first. Did she just rip a big ass hole in my shirt? Um, great. Don't like that. Did I ever do the NPE with the old aura? Sure did. You better believe it. All 
Alright, now that there's not many of them, we're just going to start keeping it range. It is going to make our um, angular a lot lower, which means they're going to all have a better time shooting at us. However, we can take the damage. We'll be fine. There's the scoundrel that destroyed our base. Get them alive if possible. I'd like to have a word with them in person. Too bad. We're going to kill you all. Warp drive active. Um, what was I saying to you guys before the ads happened? I forget now. Oh well, I guess it wasn't important. You clumsy pilot! This is hilarious. Your skate pod was destroyed and you have died? Well, actually, your old self died. And surprise, I miraculously escaped. Oh, with the, uh, yeah, with the old aura? Yeah, yeah. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, we've completed this mission. On to the next. She has just the thing that we want, again. Some envoys have asked for safe passage. They're afraid of Tamir, and they want a good pilot to pick them up and deliver them to safety. You're it. Fly to the hotel your agent mentioned and retrieve the VIPs. If something is amiss, then report back to your agent with the details. This is going to give us two overdrive injector systems, which if we click on, we can see what their attributes are. This is what they kind of modify. Um, how big they are, what, don't worry about their tech level or the structure hit points. Uh, what we care about is these modifiers and bonuses. So velocity modifier, we're going to be going 10% faster. Again, this is going to be adjusted by our um, diminishing returns. And a cargo capacity bonus of negative 15%. So this takes up some of our cargo hold because it's just so big of a module. Um, that said, we know that we are already kind of out tracking ourselves at our speed. So we're not actually gonna use this at all because I don't think it would help our ship. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and Oh, let me... Okay, we're going to abort on dock. We're going to read this message. I know what it says, but you guys probably don't. Uh, it says, confirm undocking. One of or more of your module ships is offline. This may be due to you not having the skill requirements for operating the module. Modules have no functionality while offline. Penalties may still apply. Um, so this is for our shield booster, which we don't have the skill for. It's fine. It's just This is just giving you a warning. Every time you have a module offline, it will warn you that you should probably online it. Otherwise, what, it's do, what is it doing on your ship? Um, so we're just going to hit yes. All right, let's warp to site. Warp drive active. Um, and here, it's pretty small, but you can see that we have three antimatter charges left. Um, three cycles before we need to reload. So we can go ahead and pre-reload. You can do this in a couple ways. You can right click and you can say reload. If you have different kinds of charges, they'll show up here. You can click reload that way. You can click reload all. This will reload all the modules, not just the guns that can be reloaded. Uh, or you can hit control R. If you hit control R, it will reload all. That's just a nice little shortcut. All right, so Aura says that I detect no life signs within the habitation module and the communication services in the adjacent security towers seem to be down. I suggest approaching Hotel Kim to have a better look. Its hole appears to be damaged. A cloud of radioactive glass is flowing through the cracks and filling the void surrounding the structure. Corpses floating around the inn are most likely the people who were ejected through the airlock. Make sure that we have large collidable structure under entity group selected in the overview settings so I can easily find the structure I pointed out. Okay, um, 
that's quite a lot for a new person to understand what you want them to do. So I will show you what she wants you to do. So if we go to our overview, and then we go to more, and with the, the little dots, the dots always mean more, uh, you can go to open overview settings. And then she wants us to go to filters, and she wants us to search for large collidable structure, which is an entity. Um, which looks like it is, um, oh, okay, it is on. I don't know why she's not highlighting it when you clearly see that it is there. Um, so cool. They, they recently updated their overview to a newer, fresher, better version. Um, so a lot of this should work correctly. And your overview settings should be pretty good. Um, so let's hit continue. And then we can just click on this. We can see that this is the Hotel Kim. And we're going to approach it. And why not? Let's use a burst of micro warp drive. Because we want to get right up in there. It's a trap! Smart bomb notched into the hole of the La Fumere Inn sent out a blast wave that has damaged your ship. You should leave the area immediately. All right, cool. Drive they blew up the hotel, time. those bastards. We don't have to kill these guys because she said that we could leave immediately. So we'll do just that. <laughs> Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. this mission you found only corpses oh this will not sit well with their employers all right oh um I accidentally let's go view details uh, we've come across an narcotics ring that we suspect suspect is helping fund Tamir's operations Make your way to their warehouse and destroy it. Uh, be ready for a fight, too. Destroy the warehouse and report back to your agent. All right. And we'll get a stasis webifier if we do, which will be quite helpful for us. Drive active. And we'll talk about a stasis webifier here when we get it. So again, this is probably a locked activation gate. We can go ahead and right click and activate gate, see if it works. Um, these guys are pretty far away as well. We're gonna use a pulse of micro warp drive. Honestly, probably two pulses. Mm -hmm. One's fine. Takes a little bit for us to slow down anyways. Eh, should have done two. Oh well. Oh, we're bumping up against a rock. Alright, cool. This gate is not locked. Because these guys are too much of a chump. We're going to go ahead and activate our hardener. We're going to hit Control 1, because that's what we keybound it to. Our hardener is activated now. 
we got the warehouse here. We're going to right click it. We're going to keep it at range. We're going to use two for our micro warp drive. Then we're going to target it by doing the control shift or control and drag your mouse hold. And let's start shooting it. Uh, turn off our micro warp drive. And see what happens. All right, that was our mission. We can go ahead and dock. They said be on the lookout for a fight, but. <laughs> they didn't really give us much of a fight. That's fine. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, got a web. Now we're on the last mission of cash flow for capsuleers. Something just came up. We've got him this time. Follow these coordinates to catch Tamir once and for all. Note that he'll be heavily guarded by cohorts. If your shields and armor are depleted and you're close to taking hull damage, warp out immediately. You can either dock at a nearby station and pay its repair shop to fix your ship, or you can use an armor repair module while in space. Um, they are granting us a Merlin, but we already have a Merlin, uh, and we will accept this mission. So, let's equip this web that we have. Uh, we don't have the... Oh, we could turn this on. Um, and in fact... So this medium shield extender uses a whole lot of power grid, and I think that we will need to take it off. Um, and let's turn this small shield booster on, which uses mostly, the active one uses mostly CPU and a whole lot less power grid. Uh, and let's put a stasis web on, which also uses CPU. So maybe we could do this. Power. No, let's... Not enough power. We could get rid of our kinetic shield hardener. No, let's just use this. Okay. No scram? We're doing PvE, so we don't really need a scram. Um, Alright. So, what does a web do? I'm so glad you asked. Its range is 10 kilometers, and it reduces a target ship velocity by 50%. So you know how we talked about Angular and how we were missing things because we were tar we were going too fast? Um, but they also played a role in that because they were moving. They were also going fast. Um, so what this will do is make them a sitting duck. So we should be able to still orbit and keep good Angular velocity against our the mass of enemies that want to kill us um, but our angular velocity against the target because the targets no longer going to be moving very fast is going to be lower and so we can get good shots on them so let's go ahead and do this oh you say use afterburner so we can use the extender yeah we could do that um, we were, we were out tracking ourselves with the AB, so I feel like the AB and the web would cancel each other out and we would still, like, be tra out tracking ourselves. So, this will be fine. Um, and it looks like this is actually one jump away, 
So instead of just warping directly to the place we're going to, we're going to be going to another system, and we're going to use a jump gate, a stargate, to do so. And I like to put my webs on the 4 key. You can decide how you like to set it all up yourself, what feels comfortable. Um, this is just what I like to do. I know other people do it differently. This is not the end all be all. It's just, just what I do. And we're going to move our shield booster next to our shield hardener. Uh, and we're actually going to put these on our alt keys instead of control keys. And now that we are in the correct system, we can go ahead and warp to site. Alright, here's the acceleration gate. Let's do a pulse of our micro warp drive. Just get closer quicker. Warp drive active. Using the gates uses the same rules as warping. So you gotta be aligned correctly and have proper speed. Um, I'm going to assume that this gate is locked, also especially because it says hostiles remaining. So, let's go ahead. And we can turn on our hardener. And we're just going to go orbit all these guys, put our web and guns on them. And we're going to do that until they're all dead. Seems to be uh, pretty quickly. Looks like we got some new spawns. So yeah, we're still missing him. This guy's a little tricky. So instead of orbiting him, we're going to just keep him at range. That'll lower our traversal. And we're going to get stuck in this little object. It's one of the problems when you don't manually pilot, but that's okay. Alright, right click and activate gate now. We can do a pulse of the micro warp drive. And now you see that our shields are taking some damage. We're 80% shields. We can also just click our small shield booster. And at the beginning of the cycle of the small of the shield boosters is when it prepares, which is nice. And also different than the armor. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to start orbiting these guys. Uh, let's do a pulse of the micro warp drive. Just to get closer quicker. Web and shoot at this pithy imputor. And that uh, alarm little ticky that you hear is our capacitor warning. We can change um, at what percentage it gives us the bippy bippy. It's just letting us know that our capacitor is a little low. So maybe we want to like turn off our hardener. 
These guns, these hybrid guns, do use capacitor as well. There's some that don't. Projectile guns. Um, yeah. But they don't use a whole lot. Here we're missing this guy a little bit, so we're going to just click E and click on him to keep him at range. And, alright. There's only two of these pithy invaders, so we're just going to keep them at range. We're going to do a pulse on the micro warp drive to approach them quicker. Autopilot around this big blobus thingy. Web and shoot at them once we're in range of webbing and shooting. And so a lot of combat is kind of just managing all your different things. Deciding when you want to be doing a lot of damage, but taking a lot of damage. Also known as lowering your angular. When you want to be using your modules. When you want to be repping. When you just when you want to use your micro warp drive, all that kind of stuff. So again, there's only two of these guys. Seems we're doing fine on damage, so we're just going to keep it range instead of orbiting. Web and shoot. Uh, and we can see that our shields are a little bit low, so let's go do a few cycles of shield boosting. That's fine. Keep this guy at range and shoot and web. The secret word was spoken by Z3 Tax 3. Hey. Give them a prize now. Z3 Tax 3. Congratulations, you spoke the secret word. Which one was it? Um, I think the secret word was assault. Let me go ahead and know which one of those skins you would like, and I will get it to you later when I log into the account that has those skins. Make sure you re-enable the secret word. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, the secret word you spoke was assault. Congratulations. If you guys don't know, we do giveaways a little bit differently here today, or here all the time. Uh, we have secret words. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so there's a list of Eve-themed words. We add a word every time we stream. You can also add words through community challenges, uh, community goals and channel points, all that fun stuff. And whenever someone types the secret word, they win a scope syndication skin. Easy peasy. So if you are um, active in chat, you have more chances of winning. So we're taking a lot of damage here. Let's go ahead and turn on our hardener and our booster. Um, and we should also... Oh, our micro warp drive is on. That was a big problem. We need to make sure that our micro warp the drive is off. Is empty. Because now our capacitor is empty. We're in a bit of a sticky situation. We're going to go ahead and orbit this pithy invader. Because we need to spend a little bit of time um, not taking as much damage so our capacitor can recharge. Um, and so that we can use it on shield boosting efforts. And your capacitor does have its max recharge value at about 30%. Same thing with your shields, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so we just want to recharge until we're like, yeah, 37% seems pretty good. We can do like a cycle of boost, maybe two cycles of boost. And just kind of play it cool while we uh, navigate this situation. Let's go ahead and keep it range on this guy just to finish him off. Once he finished off, the DPS will be even lower. So yeah, now that there's only one guy, we can web and shoot. Our cap's coming back up. Everything's looking pretty good. 
Uh, and Aura says, I have located your target in this area. He is not, in fact, inside the stolen Navy ship. I detect his life signs inside the stasis web tower attached to this outpost. It is currently causing a major slowdown in our velocity. Um, except for it's not. <laughs> That's funny. So if it was targeting us, like slowing us down, we would see a little web icon here. But we don't. So let's start shooting it. You haven't played Eve in a few years, you were just watching? Oh, okay. Um, well then don't worry about it. The interface is a bit bossy. Do you mean like my, my text-to-speech? There's a few different um, voices. But yeah, some of them are a little bit bossy. The one who changed, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can be a little bit bossy sometimes. They like to call me bitch. Alright. Talmar. Shoot, shoot. Hey, we'll bitch. Web and shoot. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. Well, ad time. Alright. So we killed him, and we're going to set our destination back to our home station, or the station where the career agent missions are. And we're going to start warping there. Which actually brings me up to my next thought, is that we need to change our home station. Ads are for scrubs, I agree. There's so many great ways to get rid of them. Drive active. When is the Orkham Ransom tutorial? Um, as soon as this. Make sure you re enable the secret word. I did. Docking permission requested. Docking request um. accepted. Oh. Oh, that I want that one. Uh, I'm going to pretend that that's going to work. Hey, Stir Rising. Welcome, welcome in. How you doing? Welcome to the chat. Let me know if you got any questions. All right. The state is grateful for your service, Ethel Strong. Thanks for your combat experience. We've got one less scumbag pirate boss to worry about. If you would like further, if you yeah, would like to further your career in enforcement, there are agents hiring across the Cus Luster. I heard the Sisters of Eve are looking for capable pilots. Check out the Bloodstained Stars for more information. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, you absolutely. Hey, love you. thank you, you so much. You have completed a goal. Good hey. job. Now All add right. a secret word and restart the goal. Will do. Um, thank you so much, Kraz, for the Prime sub. You made us complete our goal. Good job. Um, yeah, we're doing the career agent missions. So she's telling us to go to the Bloodstained Stars, which we will do after we complete all of the career agent missions. I highly encourage you new players that are watching this to do all of the career agent missions. Even if you don't think you're interested or going to be doing that career path, you get a lot of nice, good rewards for new players. It's good experience. It's good tutorial stuff. Just do them. And then once you've done all of the career agent missions, then you should be doing the Bloodstained Stars, which we will be doing right along with you. 
Um, all right. Okay, so I need to change my goal now that we have met it. Hey, you there. Thank you for the follow. Can I? Hey, you there. Thank Start you for the new follow. goal. You have completed a goal. Good no, job. Now Show add a secret up. word and restart the goal. You have completed a goal. Good job. Now add a secret word and restart the goal. Stop yelling at me. New goal started. Uh, hey, hey, what's up? Let me just add another secret word. All right. Uh, so we've completed the enforcer path now. Let's check out our air career program. We can see, oh, look at all this career stuff that we've done. We have a bunch of rewards that we can claim. So let's go ahead and just claim all. And as you're just playing along, it's good to just kind of periodically check your air career program or your ACP, as they like to call it. Um, claim some rewards. And we'll get into, like, actually intentionally finishing some of this stuff later. But the secret word's Merlin? Oh, man, that would have been a good one. But, alas, it is not. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and do one of the industrialist one. We'll do this one. Producer, industrial producer. Actually, let's do Oh. Um Alchemist, I'm so sorry about that. You're correct. Um, if it makes you feel better, it is in my to-do list. I just was very busy, like, since the last time I streamed. Um, it's in my priority to-do list. It, it'll get there. It'll, it'll happen. Um, right. We were looking at my skill plans. And I have completed the certified plan for entrepreneur. So let's go ahead and do the entrepreneur task. And let's make a marker. Balancing the books. One of ten. All right, so this guy is just the thing that we want. I, it's interesting that they all start with, like, I have just the thing that you want. I need someone to safely transport these data sheets. They contain various files that relate to matters of national security, not something we can entrust to anyone less than a capsuleer. Once you have delivered them, contact me and let me know you've completed the mission. I'll have something else ready for you by the time you get back. Don't forget to put the data sheets in your cargo herd before you set off. So we just need to transport these data sheets to this location here. Um, so what we're going to do is instead of letting it set our destination for us, we're going to take a little bit more control here. And we're going to see, we're going to know that this is our drop-off location. We're going to right-click it, and we're going to choose Set Destination. You can also hit Add Waypoint, but let's just do Set Destination. Also, we're going to change this song. I want more, like, chill stuff. But yeah, like, I want, I want more stuff like this. No mining stream? There may eventually be a mining stream. Um, alright. Let's go ahead and accept this mission now. 
And because we're not really fighting anything, let's go ahead and change our ship. So, I think we're going to get back in our Heron. No, our, our Merlin's fine. Our Merlin's totally fine. We're going to put a Nanofiber on now. That'll help us align just a little bit better. If we simulate... Oh, dang. <laughs> um, so, something that important about when you're going to be traveling a lot is you want your align time to be low and your... Um, warp speed to be high. So in your navigation panel you can see that your ship's warp speed is here. Five is pretty high. It's like a frigate. Um, they go pretty fast and that is how fast like you go in warp. Uh, and your align time. The way this game works is with server ticks. So every second something happens on the server and pretty much like only during the second except for calculations can happen mid-seconds. Um, but this align time is 3.11 seconds, but because things can only happen every second, you will either be in warp or not be in warp, and so it will always round up to the nearest second. So this 3.11 is really just 4 seconds, um, so we're waste wasting a lot of align time by not being able to get this lower to like 2.99. And you want to have a low align time because it saves you time, and it is also safer when bad people want to try and murder you. But let's go ahead and undock. It'll be fine. Oh, <laughs> we almost did the classic blunder. Uh, but we got a lovely little message here. This is why you should read all messages that pop up and don't immediately discard them. Uh, you were about to undock without the cargo required in your courier mission. Are you sure you want to undock now? We say no because we want these data sheets and we want to click and hold and put them into our Merlin's uh, cargo hold. Now we can undock. Spooky gave up on the story missions, never finished them, but you inspire me to complete them. Yes, awesome. Drive they also give you really good standings bonuses. So if you're doing a lot of Jita trade stuff, I would actually recommend doing all of the Kaldari career agents. So each each of the like families have a different starting location. So there are like three sets of all of these groups of guys. And there are also the four empires, so there's really like twelve. Yeah. There are twelve groups of career agent mission paths. Drive active. Ready level one combat missions in your Thrasher fleet issue. Why would you do that? That doesn't seem like a good plan at all. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, now we can start conversation, and we can complete this mission. Good job, us. Acquire these goods. So we need a black box. Go out there, find whatever remains of the ship, and use the salvaging module I give you to retrieve the back blocks. Of course, if you find any Garista pirates hanging around the area, kill them. So that's actually four jumps away, and then we need to return it to kind of like our main base. So we're going to right-click this, set destination. He's giving us a salvager, and our reward will be a venture. But the salvager... Um, okay, so this brings up an excellent question. He gave us a salvager, but where do we go? What are we doing? Um... 
And so we want to... Oh, we can also... We can't even... Okay. This makes more sense. Um, so he's telling us this stuff. But we can't actually accept this mission. Because we need to go to Oshishi's location and ask him in person. So you can only kind of generally accept missions in the station that the person is in. And because we traveled away to this other station, we need to go back to him. So we're going to... Um, you can see where he is under his name. We're going to right-click this, set destination, and then we can close this for the time being, and we can undock. And we're just returning to our home base. Orb drive active. No, like agent level one entry combat missions. Yeah, but why are you doing those? You probably don't need to or shouldn't. Sell the fleet issue ship and use regular T1, it's cheaper. But he's got it already. And it's better. And you're well, I would say you're probably not gonna lose it in like a level one in combat entry mission, but you know, you never know. You can always lose things. Orb drive active. Oh, it seems my chat has fuckered. Um You bought a Plex pack when you signed up last year. Oh, and it included it or something. Oh seven scoundrel. Welcome in. Alright, so now we are here. We can see here that they have offered us our mission. Just double click it and we can click accept. So now we need to equip these salvagers, um, which means now I think we do want to start playing with two ships. So if we look in our item hanger, we can see that salvagers, they have these three tick marks in the bottom right, and that means that they are high slot modules. So let's go ahead and fit up a heron. So instead of stripping this fitting, because we're pretty happy with like our combat Merlin, right? It's, it's pretty much fully equipped. Uh, it says unfit a module to make space. We don't want to do that. Uh, and Aura is telling us that we should still have a weapon fitted before we undock. I don't know if we need a weapon. Maybe if we have an extra one. Uh, let's get into the Heron. Um, actually, we're going to show the info on the Bantam. Okay. So this is remote shield boosters. So this is going to be a Logi frigate, logistics frigate. Um, it says that it's support. Holes are able to repair or assist other vessels in combat. Recommended as a force multiplier. So we don't really want that. And we can see that the Heron is the same um, warp speed as our Merlin. The Ibis is the like, starting thing that we have. The Corvette. We don't really care about that. Um... We could use another Merlin, but I like the Heron. We're just going to use the Heron. It looks cool. And who knows? Maybe we'll scan some more stuff. Let's put a civilian gun on there, and then we're going to put our civilian scavenger and a scavenger one that we got from the GM. Talk When you start the game, talk to the GM, ask curious questions, and then we'll send you a care package with some goodies in it. Uh, here we can have a medium shield extender. Power. Oh, never mind. Not enough power. That's a reason we might want to use the Merlin instead. Um, yeah. We're going to use the Merlin. So what we're going to do is strip this fitting. Because it doesn't have any rigs. We don't worry about it. We're going to... Okay, here. We're going to... We know that this Ethel Strong Merlin is our combat one. So we're going to right-click it. We're going to change its name. 
and we're going to change its name to Combat uh, Rig. Very, very original. And now we're going to use another Merlin that we got. And we're going to double click it to get into it. And now we can put our Gatling gun and our two salvagers. We can put the medium shield buffer here. Uh, we can put one of our afterburners on it as well. And we can put our overdrives, which make us go faster. Hey, you there. Thank you for the follow. And that's all we really need for now. We're not going to do any scanning. That's the way we're a little bit combat capable, but we can also uh, salvage whatever needs salvaging. Also, thank you so much for that follow. Um, it's not telling me who. Stash? Kraz? Is it just giving my notification for those? Anyways, thank you. thanks both of you guys for following. Warp drive active. Um, uh, might have to kneel the bads before, might have to kill the bads before you salvage. Yeah, possible. You're not skilled into level five Mimitar Frig, so no fire tail for you. Okay. Bantam, yeah. You are five in Kandari, so maybe the cop comet. Yeah, that could work. The Fed Navy comet is, uh, Galente, but the Kaldari have the, um, Hook bill. So here we have to travel okay. four systems away, so it's going to just be just clicking warp to or jump. We're just going to keep clicking jump four times and travel to our new little destination. You said talk to a GM as a new player. Will you expand on that, please? What do you say? Um, so see my first video, uh, of which you can watch the VOD in Twitch down below. It will also be posted on YouTube tomorrow in about like 20-ish hours. Um, but basically, a GM will send you a chat message if they if you're a new player. And they'll be like, hey, how's it going? Is everything going fine for you? Um, and if you just, you know, if you engage with them, ask them questions about what you're curious about, ask them for free stuff. <laughs> That's kind of what we did. Um, then eventually they'll be they'll they'll send you an email saying like hey reach out to me if you ever need anything and they'll also send you a care package um, with a few frigates and some modules and stuff. Oh Oaksborn, that was the follow. Thank you so much, Oaksborn. Let's go ahead and rearrange our modules a little bit. Drive active. O seven Dionatama. Welcome in, welcome in. Raid incoming, if you say so. Let me take a drink of water then. Warp drive active. What's up, gamers? Caroline coming in with the raid. Thank you so much for that raid. Welcome in, raiders. How are you guys doing? If you guys don't know, my name is Inf Dimensional, and we are doing a full new player walkthrough. We are going in excruciating detail, explaining every little button press and every little thing that we do as a new player, right from account creation to as far as we go. Right now we are in our third career agent mission path. We have done the two tutorials, we've done the exploration career agent and the um, enforcer career agent, and we are now on the industrialist entrepreneur uh, we just started that career path. So stay a while. I'm sure you will learn something new too. And uh, yeah, have fun, ask questions, and we'll have a blast together.
What did you guys get up to, Caroline? Uh, did you have fun? Tell me everything. Or if you got to go because you're tired, because you're done streaming, I fully understand that. And you have a great night. All right, an acceleration gate. Let's go ahead and jump it. Warp drive active. <laughs> I love those faces for timber. Just the. Uh... We started out with some Factorio, and then we went on to teach about planetary industry. Oh God, say it ain't so. So you were playing a fun game, and then you were like, what if we just sucked all the fun out of this and did it in EVE instead? Um, what? I'm messing something up. I was in the right system. I just needed to, I guess, warp to the correct place. You had to reset up all your characters anyway, so not, why not teach the world? That's fair. If you're going to set up your things, might as well teach the world. You don't mind the PI? It's passive income? It's not really that passive income. There are other things that are more passive incomes. Drive active. And better, in my opinion. There's a lot of time spent on passively getting that income. All right, now we have successfully made it. Let's activate the acceleration gate. Got to get a little bit closer to it first. Top drive active. All right, if you guys say so. If you're happy with doing your PI, go for it. I won't try and stop you. I just personally hate it a lot. But when you know, there is a little enemy here. I'm glad we brought our little gun. So here, let's go ahead and approach. We can actually just open. Um, but it's probably going to need us to... Oh, yeah. It's going to want us to salvage this, so we're going to target this. We're also going to target the rookie. And once we are in range of our salvager, which is 5,000 meters, we start shooting this rookie. And we can do control 1 and control 2 once we're in range and start salvaging. And while one might think you should be able to group the salvagers, um, you just can't. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Alright, so now we have recovered the black box. We can see that it's in our inventory. We can set our destination back home. And we can do Death the jumps drive. here. Active. Uh, you're off to bed now? Alright, have a good night. Hey, you there. Thank you for the follow. And thank you so much for that follow. Um, why is it, like, slow on the follows? I'm not getting updates very quickly. Oh, wait, are my alerts going out slower? I don't know. Warp drive active. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Make my heart go boom, boom. Yeah, you say grouping them makes little sense in re um, in relation to the salvagers. Uh, as with T2s and good skills, most wrecks get done in one cycle, so it's better to spread anyways. But maybe not with T1s. Yeah, but... I feel like you should be given the option, um, but your grouping weapons is like pretty specifically only guns. 
I know we talked about the grouping and ungrouping earlier. And even though that these are high slot modules, um, you just can't group active. them. You probably wouldn't want to in most situations. Diana Tama is correct in that. But more options is generally more better. Or you could group like two and two and two. Why can't we group our multispectrals? Yeah. I feel like anything with the same cycle time, you should have the option of grouping. Warp drive active. Hey bitch, you are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. Ad time, ad time. Lazo, thank you for the follow. You may or may not get an alert sometime. <laughs> maybe you previously got it, maybe you'll get it in the future, who knows. But thank you anyways for the follow. Drive active. All right, we're making it back to station now. Where I think I will finally remember to talk about home stations. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, so what is a home station? I'm so glad you asked. A home station is a place you go when you get potted. So if your ship blows up, you'll go into your pod. You'll be able to fly around wherever you are currently. But if your pod blows up, you go to your home station. Right now, our home station is in Amson at the Air Laboratory. That's kind of the um, beginner station that we first went into the tutorial area with. Um, however, we can change our home station, and we would like to change it to here. You do need to be able to, um, you need to be in the place that you want to change your home station to. So this is going to be our current station. You can also, alternatively, always set your home station to your school station, which is going to be dictated based on your um, race and bloodline and stuff. And then if you have a corporation you can change your home station to your corporation places. Um, there are some caveats there. We'll maybe talk about those when we join a corp. But right now, we're just going to set our home station to where we currently are, where all of our career agent missions are. And, um, yeah. And just in the case that our pod does explode, we'll just come back here and save ourselves a few jumps. All right, onward to balancing the books number three that was a bit of a long mission just because there was a lot of warping to do um all right for a career in business you will need a basic understanding of crucial industrial processes such as mining ore and reprocessing it along with a myriad of other materials into its component materials i want you to get on board your new venture and fit it with a mining laser and a turret weapon the former for the asteroids, the later for any pirates that might attack you, and head out to a certain set of coordinates where you'll mine ore from the Veldspar asteroids. Once you get back, refine the Veldspar ore into Tritanium. If you had to deal with any pirates, you can also refine any modules you retrieve from their wrecks, though do be aware that the reprocessing of ships and modules usually carries a hefty waste penalty. All right, so we're going to be granted a miner, and we are going to 
learn how to mine and refine ore. So he said that he wants us to get into the venture. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to just right click our Merlin and we're just do a strip fitting because we're going to move some stuff into a venture. So double click to unpack the venture and then double click to hop in it. Alt F to open the fitting window, go to our item hanger. And he says that we want a civilian Gatling gun. And then we actually have two miners, minor ones. Um, but we can only fit one because the other, okay. Um, oh, let's actually just read this message. We cannot fit the minor one because your ship doesn't have any turret slots left for fitting, possibly because you have already filled your ships with turrets that simply cannot be fitted. Um, turret slots represent how many weapons of a certain type can be fitted on a ship. The current design is over 100 years old and is modular enough to allow for a great leeway in the fitting of various weaponry. So, turret slots, or turret hardpoints, are up here, and if you hover over it, it says 2 out of 2. These little dots are filled. If I take this off, this dot goes unfilled. We can only have 2 turrets on our high slots for this ship. So... They seem to think that we need a Gatling gun, so we're going to have that, and we're going to have one minor one. Or we could use a different ship, but we're going to go with the Venture because they wanted us to be in the Venture as well. Uh, we do have a civilian mining laser upgrade. Let's go ahead and put that on. That is going to upgrade our mining in some capacity if you're really curious what it does. It will do mining amount bonus of 3%. And let's put on an afterburner. And any mid-slot modules that we need. We could maybe put on our shield if we have enough power grid. It looks like we do. And that is looking pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and undock and get ready to mine in this very lovely looking ore ship or Outer Ring Excavators is kind of the company that makes this ship or faction, whatever you want to call them. Let's change our modules up. That looks pretty good. Basically, the new player fitting you get for free. One gun and one miner? Yeah. So I will talk about mining. Mining, mining, mining. It's a profession. Okay, so they are saying change the mining tab. Because you're going to see all of your asteroid rocks and belts and stuff here. You can see that there's an asteroid Veldspar right here, 27 kilometers away. Let's go ahead and approach it. Um, oh, they want us to orbit it, so we're going to just click W and orbit. And let's turn on our afterburner so we can get closer quicker. And let's target it. We're too far away to target. This thing only has 17 kilometers targeting range. And let's check our optimal on our miner. Looks like it's within 10 kilometers. Again, anything that only has an optimal, that is its max range. You can't do anything after that. Anything with an optimal and fall off, you can do essentially at any range. It just will be worse and worse and worse. All right, so now that we're within 10 kilometers, we can click it and click on the asteroid to target and start mining some Veldspar. Captain, this is your ship's capacitor. Energy stored. Oh, they're talking about our capacitor now. This is, and which is why you should do all of the career age missions, because some of them talk about other stuff, so they don't talk about capacitor. It's just good to do all of them. Energy stored in your capacitor is used to power your warp drive and keep your active modules running. Different ships have different capacitor sizes and recharge times, and modules can be fitted that boost your capacitor, increase its size, or improve its recharge rate. All very true and helpful in various fittings we got a big old raid what's up old footing thank you so much for that raid how are you guys doing welcome in welcome in to the nth dimensional show my name is nth dimensional and today and for a little bit while here we're doing a series a big old series of a full 
new player experience walkthrough. We are doing everything from account creation to all of the career agent missions, the tutorials, the Sisters of Eve arc. We're going to be talking about getting Pachman standing, some mission stuff, and we're going to we're just going to continue to expand from there. It's probably all going to be an alpha account. If we ever do go Omega, it will Thank probably be all. through the use of Plex. Um, but yeah, join us on our little journey here. Ask questions. I would be super glad to answer them for you. And we're just having a good old time. You can um, check the VOD for day one over down on the Twitch channel down below. Alternatively, and probably preferably, it will be out on YouTube tomorrow in about like 20-ish hours. So do check that out. Uh, I think it's pretty fun and cool, and it's just kind of a nice thing to slap on and enjoy in the background, if I do so say my, so say myself. All right, so we've been mining this asteroid for a little while here while we've been talking, and we can see that the Venture has an extra hold. It has a regular cargo hold, a drone bay for its drones, which we'll talk about when we talk about drones, and a mining hold. Because it is a ore ship, a specific ship for mining stuff it gets this extra mining hold and all of these rocks are going in this mining hold we got about 2000 veldspar that seems pretty good we're going to oh another important thing about mining is that you need to decycle you need to click off of your miner it will immediately turn off and you will get however many rocks it has gotten in its cycle um but if you just warp away without decycling it, you will not get those rocks. I know it's a little bit weird, um, but if we click this, it's going to immediately turn off. We'll get some rocks, and we can go hit dock up. Warp drive active. And we're just sig tanking or signature tanking. We're just moving too fast for this little pirate to hit us. All right. Back to the raid. Welcome in, Ophidin. How did your uh, stream go? Tell me everything that you did, or alternatively, don't because you're tired and hungry and have a good nap and sleep if you need to. Um, other than that, yeah, tell me everything. What's up, brother? How's it going? We're doing pretty awesome. You had a wicked night of a giveaway and scuffed meme reviews. Don't nice. You wish you were doing this? Accepted. Dude, I wish I... Wait, I wish I you you knew you were doing this. I feel like I could have really done this with you. Oh, um, well, you can still, we can still figure something out. If you want to do a little, little collab thing or something, um, we can definitely do something. Uh, yeah. All right. So we've made it back in and now we need to refine this stuff. It says click here to open the reprocessing plant. We click this and we go to our mining hold. And it says drop items in here to reprocess. We're going to reprocess our Veldspar. You always got to pretty much reprocess your ore into minerals. Minerals are useful. Ore is for um, harvesting. And you can transport ore easier than you can transport minerals. You can also compress your ore, which maybe we'll talk about later. You can make it even easier to transport. But that's kind of a, a dynamic. It, it also only goes one way. You can go ore to minerals. You can't go minerals to ore. Um, it says that our reprocessing is calculated. We're going to get 50%. Uh, you can improve this with various lots of different things. Um, but yeah, we're, our output location is going to be our item hanger. Tells us what its estimated price is in the ore value and what its estimated price is in its mineral form. This can be a little bit wonky. Ore prices and mineral prices get weird if you want to delve into all that that's a thing uh, but yeah we're gonna go ahead and reprocess this for our quest and we can start a conversation it says great we've acquired 333 of trit tritanium and we can complete the mission and request the next one Um, new bro of only like 24-ish hours played. I mean, honestly, <laughs> this is still a new bro. 
Uh, acquire these goods. All right. The black box you retrieve in a case of the Greases have built a surveillance facility nearby, using it to launch attacks on convoys from the Science and Trade Institute. You need to take out the outpost and any vessels defending it. Once the area is clear, you can use the civilian data analyzer. We gotta remember reading is key. Reading is very important in this game. Um, use the civilian data analyzer, giving you to hack the data storage device in the area. Bring back whatever it contains. All right, so he's giving us the civilian data analyzer, and we just need to go get the chip. Luckily, we have one free mid slot. And you may be tempted to use a level one data analyzer because we have it. I would say just just do use what they tell you to use because sometimes things are a little bit wonky and they require silly stuff. So if it tells you something specific, probably best bet just do something specific. Our venture is still a fine ship to use because we're already in it. So let's go ahead and undock. I think KL is the reprocessing. We got 5,000 trit here. That's that's a nice chunk. Metalarn, thank you so much for that follow as well. If I miss any thanks for the follows, um, the um, alerts and stuff are being a little timey-wimey weird. Active. So, sorry. I do appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much for the follow. Also, what you, you can do for me is that if you guys are raiders, any and every raider... Um, if you see on the top of your URL, if it says equals raid, you want to refresh your page or you want to click my name in the bottom left twice. Both of those will fix that URL and make you count for real analytics, which will help me out and I will appreciate you greatly. You troll Ophidin? I know. Ophidin is just so easy to troll. It's easy pickings. Seth Meyer, 07, welcome Active. in. Sarah Nub says, everyone is new once. You can get up and running pretty quickly. If you specialize in one thing at a time, you do better usually. Yeah, specialization is a great thing to do. You do not want to um, go too thin on your training because then it takes forever. All right, there's a little guy, a little, little guy defending. I'm going to have to probably kill him. Funny enough, made that new player experience a couple months ago just for fun. Found a couple of bugs. Yeah. There's a number of bugs. We just do our best to not worry about them. <laughs> Pandine, you're a new player. Sounds about right. Let's shoot this guy. And while we are, we can hack while we're shooting. All right. So we talked about the hacking grid in our hacking tutorial, but we'll go over it a little bit again. We're trying to reach a core node, which is going to be a color node. And whenever we click on one of these nodes, we will get a number. The number indicates where a non-harmful node is or the core node. So it could be the core node, a helpful tool, or a white node, which has a 50-50 shot of being helpful or hurtful. So four, three, two, uh, two, three. Let's go down this way. Let's uh, shoot this. So it's it will do this much damage. It has this much health. This is our health. This is our damage. We go first. So one, uh, one. And there's the core, it has 20 health, 10 damage. We hit it once, we go down to five life, 10 damage, uh, but because we hit first, we're going to kill this. Successful hack, we can right click, we can open cargo, we can loot this encoded data chip, and that is our mission completed. Let's go ahead and dock up. I'm going to take a quick little bio break, so I will be back in a minute or two.
Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. I have returned. All right. On to balancing the books. Five. I have just the thing that you want. Greases have heavily encoded all of their tactical information. Our best hope at decryption is a friend of mine over in Aikido 7, Moon 3, Lydai Corporation Factory, so I want you to safely ferry it to her. Be happy to offer you some inertia stabilizer for the journey. This module improves your ship's handling and maneuverability, helping you align to warp faster, which we talked about a little bit earlier. That will be indeed helpful. Um, so, yeah, we're just moving. We're just transporting some stuff. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Moving stuff to the right place. Uh, we can just fly our, our venture. Because the venture is cool like that. Uh, we're going to get rid of our mining laser. And put an inertia stabilizer on. Which only brings us down to four. Mm, okay, never mind. Let's put the mining laser back on. Let's hop into our... Um, yeah, our combat frig. And now, hopefully, we can get under three. All right, perfect. Um, I am unable to detect the items. Oh, because the item is in our venture inventory. Um, okay. So here we go to our ship hangar. And we can see our venture. We can right click it. We can open its cargo hold. And we can see the encoded data chip and just move it over to our combat brig Merlin. And as you see now, our align time is less than three seconds, which means it gets boosted up to three seconds. And that's great for us. Just saves a little bit of time, makes aligning a little bit safer. We can set destination and start jumping. Warp drive active. So, I let's talk about the button that you should never press. Let's talk about autopilot. Someone in your career might tell you about autopilot, which is the only reason I'm telling you about it. Because you should never click autopilot you will get killed for it even in high sec people will see you autopiloting and they will kill you for it as a lesson Warp drive. what autopilot does is if you have a destination it will warp you 10 kilometers away from the next gate and then you will slow boat, also known as you will just go your regular speed without props or anything, to the gate and jump it. 
Um, so we'll we'll do a jump of autopilot for this next part to just show you what it does. But again, people will kill you if you do this. So you can hit Control S. You can also click the autopilot button down here in the bottom left, and that will autopilot is engaged. Um, Warping to Stargate. So here, it's going to take over control. It's going to warp to Stargate. But it's not going to warp directly to Stargate. It's going to warp you 10 kilometers away from it. Or 20? We'll find out. Don't do it. Don't do it. Unless you really don't care about not dying. And you really just want to get somewhere. And only do it in high sec. You will for sure die in low sec. Or any other security space. Yeah, 10 kilometers. And then you just kind of slow Approaching boat Stargate. towards the Stargate. It's much faster than just clicking jump every time. Especially if you're in anything bigger than a frigate. If you're in a shuttle and you don't care, you don't have a pod, sure, fine. But don't do it. Just don't do it. Autopilot jumping. If you care at all about your ship. Warping to station. Warp drive active. Approaching station. Approaching station. So I don't know if we talked about it before, but all stations have these little docking lights, and it's actually a sphere around the station. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a sphere, not a not a cylinder. It might be a cylinder some places. Docking permission um, requested. Docking permission requested. But you need to be within that docking request sphere accepted. before you can dock. And in more dangerous areas, this Auto can really hurt you if, you if you do not um, land in that area. All right, so let's start the conversation and complete the mission. We've delivered the goods. We can request the mission. Again, this guy, we have to accept the mission where he's at. So we can right-click this, set destination. We can close this for now. And we can jump back to him. We're getting a conversation. Oh, would you look at that? I'm so happy. Um, what am I doing? Oh, we're on the mat mining tab still, which is kind of annoying. Uh, we want to be on general tab. And then we can jump to this Earth place. Drive active. All these different stargates. We can also sort our tabs by distance or um, tag or icon, which is kind of my preferred for like my travel. That way, all the stargates are together. Um, your your like set destination is always going to be on top, and then the sun, and then stargates, and then stations, and then player stations, and then mobile depots, and like so on and so forth. Um, so, I was just invited to a scam chat. Um, basically, I went outside of the new That's player right. zone, where the tutorial generally takes place. And so, this is where these corps prey on people. And this is probably going to be our first corp that we join. Because, you know, why not? Um, let's read. Regency. Um, access to high, low, null, buyback and hauling services. Flourish within a friendly community. Casual corporation, real life comes first. New recruiting and vets welcome. Um, so we have an overview channel, Alliance Public, a real life mental health. Oh, 
Okay, so now I'm wondering if they are actually a scammer. That's some that's some next level scam shit. Um, broadcast for reps B four R um, is a great organization. Is that what I'm gonna call it? Um, but yeah, we we all have mental health problems and issues and whatnots from time to time. Broadcast for reps is a place where you can go and talk to someone um, that is also involved in Eve. You have a common thing that you can talk about, um, and it's just if you need if you need someone, if you're feeling bad and having bad thoughts and stuff, definitely reach out to uh, Broadcast for Reps. Um, it's interesting that they have that in one of their like channel things that they talk about. Um. They got the 1 million SP link. Oh yeah, baby. You see that spam so often. You got their Discord. The recruitment is open. Okay, so we live in solitude. It's like 1796 systems surrounded by low sec and NPC null. We call it an island. Yeah. Uh, solitude is not where you want to be as a new player. Access to Null meaning Null is just two jumps away, but it's not safe. Yeah. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now. So ad pause time. your fucking game. Yeah. So let's see what their corporation info is. So autopilot drops you 10 kilometers away, so manually jumping doesn't leave you at range. Correct. Manually jumping leaves you um, within 2,000 meters of your intended place. So if you intend to jump to the gate, which is zero, it'll land you 2,000. But jump range, like, you can always jump immediately from that range. They say, come live on an island. Chase your desires from intense battles to mastering industry. No matter what your skill level or interest is, you'll grow and make friends and fuel your personal passions. Join a welcoming family of capsuleers. Um, a tribute, will they tell us our tax rate? ISK tax, tax rate is 5%. Which doesn't actually seem that bad. LP is 5%. They have a buyback program. Um, it's like... What they're kind of doing here... And I'm just assuming that they're a scam. Because everything is a scam. What they're doing here is they are inviting you to go to this place that feels safe. It's high sec. But in actuality is not super safe for new players because you do need to cross low sec and or null sec to get back to like civilization. So they say, oh, you've gotten blown up trying to get back to Cheetah. Why don't you just sell your stuff to us for our buyback rates? And our buyback rates are not great. So they're going to be making money on that kind of... They're going to be using your labor as a new person, mining and doing all that stuff, and then buying the stuff that you produce for less than you should be getting. Um, at least they're not war eligible. And they're part of the monarchy. Oh, they used to be part of Brave. Interesting. What's the monarchy? <laughs> We're led by our enduring monarchy queen. Member of the crown.
Okay. This may be a place to go. Who are the members? The Crown, Omega Blue Balls of New Eden, the Regency, the High Regency, and Zoth. What's High Regency? Do we infiltrate the monarchy? There's 49 people there. They got 407 members. Maybe. That's a maybe for me. Alright, so we... We're going to enjoy, or we're going to accept this. What are we doing? Security forces guarding the pirates' next target aren't operating at full capacity and have a shortage of armor repair modules. I need you to procure one from them um, for them before the next attack, and I don't care where from. Let's see how good your business acumen is. Okay. So we need to get a civilian armor repair. We need to drop it off here. We're going to be granted broker relations. Hello, Captain. You can complete your active mission by purchasing the necessary items from the market. To begin, right-click the items from the panel and do view market details. So she's going to tell us how to um, buy stuff. Right-click the item in the info panel, which is here, and view market details. Which brings up the regional market. Every sell order for an item of this type available in your current region of space is listed here. When selecting an order, be careful. Sellers may try to take advantage of unwary capsuleers by setting excessively high prices, trying to draw them into dangerous territory. Very true. Sorting your orders by the number of jumps helps you purchase items in more convenient locations. Click on the jumps header to sort by jumps. So we can sort by jumps. I've scanned the market and confirmed that there is an offer at a reasonable price in the same station as the agent who just hired you. <laughs> Shocking. Lucky for us, the agent does not seem to have noticed yet. <laughs> Double click on the lowest price offer with sufficient quantity available in your current station. So, to further expand upon this, is that anything that expires in like 360-ish days is going to be an NPC sell order. Um, and anything that is 90 days or less is going to be a player order. Also the quantity. So like this is a player order. This is all NPC order. I should infiltrate Wingspan? Probably not. I don't think I'm going to do wormhole stuff. Um, all right, so we want to double click on this and we want to buy make sure that this is where we're at It will say station not to be confused with system which system isn't far away, but yeah This means it's in a different station in the system um, Also, so in Eve everything is bought and sold it's uh, pretty much 100% a player market. So, like, you're not generally going to see things that are sold by NPCs, except for, like, specific story-ish stuff. Um, but, yeah, so there's all these sell orders, and there's a bunch of buy orders. People can say, I will buy this item for this price at this location, and if someone has that, they can go there and sell it to them from their buy order. Alternatively, you could look at the sell orders and say, I want to buy an item, and someone is selling it here at this price, and you can go there and buy it. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful player-driven economy. Pretty much all items are made by players, except for like this tutorial stuff. Uh, and yeah, it's really fun and enjoyable for me, personally. I like this part of the game. Uh, we go ahead and cancel this, uh, and then we can complete this mission.
All right. We've discovered an ancient site that the pirates are using some kind of staging outpost. We cannot let them continue to gain any kind of foothold in this area. You need to kill them all. Since we're businessmen, though, mind you, I suggest you also fit a civilian relic analyzer to your ship. Once you've cleared the mission area of hostiles, you can use the analyzer to inspect any ancient ships or ruins in the area. Our Empire Skites have found an ancient site that might be of use to us. Go there, analyze, and find what it holds. There'll be pirate ships that I'm sure you'll have no problem dealing with. Whatever you find after your analysis, bring it back to me. So we're getting a civilian relic analyzer, which means we should use the civilian relic analyzer. So again, Alt-F to bring up our fitting window. Item hanger. Uh, looks like Aura is saying for this mission we need a specific module. It can be a dangerous place. Make sure that we still have a weapon fitted. And they want to unfit a module to make space. We're going to unfit this kinetic shield hardener. Because I don't think it was super useful for us. Um, especially because our kinetic shield is already pretty high. And let's put on a civilian. Alright. And now we're ready to go. For legal purposes, items dropped by NPCs count as made. <laughs> yeah. Warp drive active. Yes, that is in fact true. Um, all items are, I guess, quote unquote, created by players, but sometimes that creation is killing an NPC and taking what they spawned. Like dead space modules. Warp drive active. Let's see if I can just activate this acceleration gate. Warp drive active. Sure can. Vroom. An ancient ship structure. So this little square box that's filled in, we know that that is a um, thing that you can analyze with a data or a relic analyzer. If we hold down T and click on it, we can show its info. Um, it says, yeah, it just says analyzing. It doesn't tell you that you actually need a relic. You just kind of know that stuff after playing a little bit. Um, let's shoot these guys. And, um, I think that's all I was going to say. So we can hack it. Four, three, three, two, one, uh, enemy thing. Let's kill this. Two, one, and here's the core. And we can open its cargo, take its data core. And we can dock up. Warp drive active. Boom, 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 boom. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, let's complete this. And move on to number eight. 
Uh, I've compiled all the information you've gathered so far from the various pirate facilities. It's my belief that with everything going on, we might be able to get more military funding out in the areas. The central data court will provide the evidence we need to argue for. It. Please take it to Urka um, for me. I have a friend there who can pass it to the right people. Can we count on you to make this delivery? And we'll get a limited social adaption chip, which will improve our charisma. Um, which we talked about earlier in the stream about uh, implants and all that stuff. Uh, let's accept this. Which maybe we'll talk again a little bit once we get there. Because <laughs> it's good to reiterate things. Uh, make sure that we grab our central data core because we're doing a courier mission. And now we can undock. And set destination. Oh, only one jump away. Easy peasy. Warp drive active. So yeah, on our way over, I will talk about um, implants. So if we show info on this, we can see that it gets plus one bonus to charisma. Again, your training skills are dictated by two um, traits. So like this takes intelligence memory and charisma is going to be like the trading stuff. So if we go to social, it's going to be charisma and intelligence. So basically using implants to improve your pod, making a training pod, you can get better points for that. It makes your training go faster. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. Again, you start out with like all 20s and then 19 in charisma. Um, you can change it, but I really hesitate for you to do that. Please don't do that unless you really trust someone to help you and make like a six month plan. But as you're just starting, you don't have a six month plan. So just don't do that. Um, maybe think about it in a year or something. All right. And we got a big old raid, Contempo Enterprises. Big hearts to you. Thank you guys so much for coming in for that raid. How was your stream? Sorry, Tell me everything. Requested. Did you have fun? Alternatively, just leave because Definitely you're tired and excellent. hungry from you streaming. Thank Either way is good. Thank you so much for that raid. All of you raiders, I have a very important task for you. If you could double click my name in the bottom left hand or refresh the page, that would mean you are no longer a raider and you count as true analytics. I would really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're new here and if you don't know anything about me or my stream, welcome in. My name is Nth Dimensional, and we are in the midst of a saga. A full, detailed, new player experience walkthrough. We started at account creation, and we did the tutorials. We're doing the career agent missions. We're going to do the SOE epic arc. We're going to do everything and we're just going to continue to expand about we're we're explaining our every click, every button press, everything that you need to know that we might get tripped up on. It's just full details here. Hey, you there. Thank you. For if you have any questions, please ask them. I would love to answer them at this time. And other than that, just come along, enjoy the ride. You will probably learn something yourself. And yeah, all that good stuff. And uh, thank you for those biddies also, Draken. It's the duck people, the duck people. Hey, you there. You say the uh, stream was chill and slow? It was all good? Nice, nice, nice. You're going to go lurk and get food? For sure. Enjoy. And also thank you guys so much for those follows. Uh, the follow alerts and whatnots are being a little bit wonky and slow. So sorry if I don't shout you out specifically, but I, I do thank you. Thank you guys all. All right, so we're going to complete this mission here. And we can request the next mission, but again, we have to go to this guy because we have to accept missions that are where they're at. And yeah, so let's go ahead and warp on over back to his station. Omega coming in with some fitty bits. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Warp drive active. Yeah, Contempo also says that stream elements was lagging. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not using stream elements for it, um, but yeah, it just seems like something. There's some kind of lag going on. Some servers are like being funky. Oh 
What's up, Omega? You say, hello, hello, Ace Rimmer. Have I ever completed the Superior Super Sight with all the rooms and all rewards? Is there a ship that can withstand all the damage? You've come to the right place. Um, yes. I have. Um, okay. however, I will actually honestly say, um, Brother Grimoire does this a lot. <laughs> um, so Brother Grimoire is another streamer. He uses a Stratios, and he does things in high sec, um, including a lot of superior sleeper sites. Um, you can ask him for his fit. He has a cheap version and an expensive Your version. Um, there are a number of ships that can do it, some like T3Cs. Uh, technically, you could do it with like a battleship. Um, accepted. And technically, you can do it with an Astero. You just have to be very good. You're <laughs> very good at the site. Um, and I would not recommend that. Uh, most of the time when I do a superior sleeper site, I just do, um, I kind of like do a few of the rooms and a few of things here and there, so it's not too dangerous. I like to do it in a, um, Thanesis, even though I haven't really done any for quite a while, actually. But, all of this is to say, check out the YouTube channel, exclamation mark YouTube. I'll even do it for you. Um... And I have a video, it is actually, I think, my very first video is the Superior Sleeper Site Cache Walkthrough. Check it out, and you should be pretty much good to go. Give you lots of good info. Alright. Balancing the books, 9 of 10. Oh. He just wants us to get two 1MN afterburners, but we already have that. So we're already going to complete it. Hey, you there. Thank you for the follow. And if we didn't have those, we could just buy them on the market. No problem. All right. The final test. Balancing the books, 10. Um is also an opportunity to feed the war machine. You provided us with utility modules. Now it's the basic building blocks of violence, weapons. I'm giving you a blueprint copy, which you can fulfill my quota. Any remaining production runs are yours, as this is an industrial class ship I'm going to reward you with. Uh, are you ready to press pass your final test, Ethel Strong? Um, so we need to... Thank you for the follow. Acquire a 75M Gatling rail, but we already have that. <laughs> um, okay. So we are going to industry this one because that's what the tutorial wants. So let's just do what the tutorial wants. So we click the industry button up top here, and then we go to blueprints. Alternatively, we could go to industry in the Neocom menu which is the hamburger menu in the top left. Go to industry, industry. That will also open this industry panel. Um, you can also use Alt S. Alt S is the hotkey for industry. And they gave us a blueprint. So this is how you make things in EVE. You do industry to make things. And when you click on it, we can see what are they trying to get us to click on? They're not really going to give us any tutorial for this. Really? I can see where people get hung up on this. Um, we need these materials. We need tritanium and pyrite. And if you right-click this thing here, you can do buy missing materials or copy material information or buy all the materials, but we already have tritanium. So let's see if we click buy missing materials then it gives us the option of buying some pyrite 209 of it for 10.2 isk a pop which is going to total into 2131 isk if we hover over this we can see that that is 32 percent above the regional average so we want to dive a little bit deeper into this pyrite any item that you see you can right click it and go view market details and we can see now if we go by price, sort by price, um, things are 
it's selling for about seven high sevens at low eights but those are like 10 jumps ish away um the lowest station one is 10 so yeah that's going to be like that 30 percent markup um but because it is actually a very low number amount it's only 2,000 ISK. If we look over at our wallet, we have 7 million ISK now. We don't really care about this small markup for this small volume, so we can just buy it. All right, and then we can click Start. Uh, there are a lot more complex things about industry, which I am just not going to talk about right now, so don't worry about it. We're just going to click Start. Once we click start, it moves from our blueprints area, it gets all grayed out, and goes to our jobs tab. Now we can see our jobs tab, it's going to take 13 minutes to complete this, and in 13 minutes we'll be able to um, have it. Oh, you saw a clip with Marquee Dragon getting this Proteus 3 shot at in a ghost site? <laughs> Look at his face was priceless, yeah. Um, I will be right back because I need to think about timing stuff. Um, I guess en enjoy a short ad, yeah, because I need to figure out what I'm doing. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game.
I am back. What's up, Rob Zorn? Um, yeah. I just need to figure out, yeah, what I want. Okay. Yeah. So let's check on our industry. How are we? Did you see the serious board is our death, by the way? I, I didn't. I don't know anything. Tell me more. I'm doing good. Eight minutes on that. Let's go ahead and start the um, Soldier of Fortune. Let's do the Soldier of Fortune one. Lost their 40 in Sarum Prime. Is is why is that important? I guess. <laughs> tell me, tell me more. All right. So this guy wants to learn some more advanced aspects of warfare. I've been summoned face-to-face -face meeting by a local pirate cartel who have recently been attempting to blackmail him. I want you to take my friend's place and kill these criminals. All right. We just got to kill, kill the hostiles. Let's get rid of our analyzer. Uh, we can plug in our chip. And do we have any mid slots that we would like to have? I guess the kinetic hardener. Don't know what more to tell you other than they the pissed off the wrong people and pop. Oh, okay. Orb drive active. Is there a reason that's like different than any other random poor desire? Uh, lots of four desires die. This rest are the war decking alliance. Oh, so that was their war HQ, I guess. They deserve it. Oh, I believe it. One of them. Oh, okay. So now <laughs> we are doing a career agent mission. So we're starting at, like at the bottom. One of ten. Of another kind of like fighting one. So in our, in our pretty capable combat freak now. So this should be pretty easy. We're just going to keep these guys at range. And just shoot them. And you know. Rinse and repeat. Drive active. He was our main one. Alpha count? Uh, yeah, Rob Zero. Uh, you must you must be new here. Um, we're doing a full alpha, um, new account, everything walkthrough experience. Talking about everything we do in excruciating detail. To hopefully, uh, be a very good resource for request any request new player. Accepted. I know you're not new. I'm saying this is... Alright, we've discovered the headquarters of the pirate group you dispatched in your last mission, and it's time to take them out for good. I'm going to give you a frigate loaded with proximity-based explosive charges. 
This is the thing that you need to read. Read your mission de debriefs. Or pre whatever it is. Um, and your job is to fly directly into their headquarters. As your frigate explodes, you'll be perfectly and safe inside your capsule. So just relax and get back to me when you're done. Fly the frigate your agent give you to the pirate base. Once the explosive charges inside have been set off, your assignment will be complete. You'll be granted a griffin. So we need to fly this griffin into the base. And we're not going to fit it at all because it's going to explode. Warp drive active. Oh, insure it? Yeah. <laughs> we probably should have insured it. Oh, well. Wee. I like how the griffin looks. It's like a boat. Um, we can also talk about... So you know, however, when whenever we like click on a thing, our camera looks at it. And that can be pretty fun for like cinematic stuff. Um, but you eventually probably don't want this. And the way you can disable it is this button here. It's in your little, uh, to the left of your HUD. It's called Orbit Camera. Uh, you can right-click it and do Toggle Auto or not. So now when we click on things, uh, it won't move to look at them. For better or worse, it's kind of whatever your preference is. Oh wait, we're just approaching the Garista's hideout. Um, I'm actually going to turn it back on. You can also do Shift-C. Shift-C to turn it on and off. Um, some people like it on and off for different various reasons. Um, some people accidentally turn it on and don't know how to turn it off. And vice versa. So, just a good thing to be known knowing about. Our ship exploded with its explosives, and now we return to the place. This is a mission that kind of just teaches you about what happens when your ship explodes. It's kind of a legacy mission. I don't think they really need it anymore, but like, since it's just in there, there's no reason to get rid of it, I guess. Kind of the tutorial teaches you a little bit about this now more. Rob says, I hate that camera. It took me ages to work it out. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of times for, like, chill stuff like this, I like it to point towards the thing, but if I'm in some hardcore stuff, I want full control over my camera. Oh, wait, uh... We're... We're... All right. So find the fleeing pirate and activate your civilian warp disruptor on them, preventing an escape. You're authorized to kill any escort vessels that you see, but not the primary target. So now they're giving me a civilian warp disruptor. Oh, let's read this too. Next up is a kind of interdiction called warp disruption. When activated on another target ship, these kind of modules tackle it, disabling its warp drive. Tackling only works if you keep the target within your module's range and can overpower its warp strength. A warp disruptor lowers a ship's warp strength by one, while the more powerful warp scrambler re reduces it by two. I'll give you a civilian warp disruptor to test it out on a pirate that escaped from the headquarters you just blew up. Pin him down, but don't blow him up. 
All right, so let's go back into our combat frig. All F for fitting. Item hanger. And we can get rid of the hardener. Put on the warp disruptor. And undock. <laughs> And I like to put my warp disruptors or scrams in slot 3. Again, you can put your layout however you like, however you find convenient. But this is kind of like what I like. A fleeing pirate. So let's go ahead and keep range at the fleeing pirate. Activate our micro warp drive to get close to him, target him with control click, and then we can press the civilian warp disruptor, which is a range of 20. It says, all right, please don't shoot me. Uh, let me leave and I'll go. So now he can't warp off. He's, he's tackled. Good job, us. Let's go ahead and warp, warp back home. Active. And tackling is a very important part of PvP. Because if they're not tackled, they'll just warp off, and then you won't be able to kill them. And vice versa. You don't want to be tackled, because then you can't warp off, and then you might die. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Something just came up. It's right up your alley. A vessel nearby was attacked by pirates, with its only survivor left for dead in a disabled vessel. We need you to repair his ship with a remote shield booster module so he can return to safety. Let me stress again that if you are able to repair the vessel, not blow it up. I know you capsuleers have an itchy trigger finger at the best of times. Rude! Alright, so they are giving us a small remote repair shield booster to do this job. Let's go to the fitting window, our item hanger. We're going to remove one of these. It's asking if we want to clear our module group, or all of our guns were grouped together. Uh, we say yes. We put this in the top slot. We put our ammo back in. Put the remaining ammo in our um, cargo hold. And then we can undock. Warp to sight, Warp close window. Damaged vessel. Let's approach the damaged vessel. We'll micro warp drive. Target it. Look at our range and optimal. Looks like 4,000 and 11,000. And go ahead and turn it on. Start repping this guy. It says basic systems are operational again. We have a functional warp drives. Thank you, pilot. I owe you one. I'm getting out of here. So in Eve, this is not how it works. <laughs> um, if you shield rep them, it just repairs their shields. Uh, their ship is, however, fully functional until the last tick of hull damage goes down and it explodes. You never, like, have your warp drives malfunction because you don't have any more shields or anything like that. Um, there is overheating, which is thermodynamics. You can overheat your ship and have modules get disabled that way. But in order to turn them back on again, it's a little bit different slash more complex than just repairing them with their shields. So, Warp drive don't active. get confused by that confusing messaging.
Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, we can also finish up our industrial thing here. So before we request this next mission, um, let's open up our industry with Alt S, or you know, the Neocom industry industry. And now we can click deliver. So when we deliver, we get in our cargo hold one of these fantastic Gatling rail guns. And our blueprint copy, there's four remaining runs on it. So we could make four more of these if we wanted to. Um, but because we'd have to buy the more expensive pyrite, it's probably not worth it doing here. But we'll save that and maybe do some industry with it later somewhere else. Uh, but now that we have this, we can start conversation with Oshishi and say complete mission. Well done. Here's your badger as promised, which is a cruiser, uh, interestingly enough. Um, use it well. You've completed all my tasks and shown yourself to be a savvy entrepreneur. There is an entire cluster filled with opportunities for someone like you. To find other agents, you can check the agency. Distribution agents might be of interest to you. That's where you deliver cargo from one place to another place. Or if you want to broaden your skill set, you can reach out to the other career agents in the station. Nice. Uh, so yeah. They give us this badger ship. And we do want to make sure that we can fly this ship because we're going to be using it to fly all of our stuff out of the career agents area once we're done here. Um, so we go ahead and show info on it. We're going to go to the requirements tab and we require spaceship command three and Kaldaria hauler one. And we can see because they're grayed out, that means we have them. So we can successfully fly this ship. So that will be good for us. That's a hauler, not a cruiser. Okay, you're f that, fair, fair. I did misspeak, misspeak a little bit. It is a size class that is equivalent to a cruiser. However, technically, cruisers and haulers are different. Let's go ahead and look at the ship tree here for a sec. So if you go to the Neocom menu, go down to ships, and then go to ship tree. Don't get overwhelmed. There's a lot of them. Just don't worry too much about it for the time being. Uh, it looks something like this. It starts out on Kaldari because we started as a Kaldari character. There's also the Amar, Galente, Mimitar, um, Or, which is our little venture is an Or ship. And these are all like pirate factions or weird factions kind of down here. Um, but we have Kaldari State because that is what we started with. Again, it doesn't matter what race you start out as. You can very, very, very easily train into any of these other um, races of ship, depending on what you want to do, um, which we'll talk more about later. Um, for now, it's whatever you start out as, it's totally fine to just like get level three in their frigates and probably their just destroyers if you want and well we'll we'll just use the Sinesis actually. So don't even worry about like training destroyer stuff until you kinda decide more of a path that you want. Um that said, actually I have a recommendation. You should follow my recommendation. You don't have to follow my recommendation, but if you want a fun and easy and good time to and Eve, follow my recommendation. You want to train, let me bring it up again, uh, you want to train light missiles, because that covers light missiles and rapid light missiles. You want to train medium drones, and then torps, and then heavy drones, and then hands. So light, ma light missiles and rapid light missiles. The ship that I would suggest you start training, if you are an Omega, is the Jackdaw. That is like your first really good ship that you should be training and working towards. Um, 
if you're uh, an alpha, don't worry about it. You could fly one of these destroyers, and that would be just great. Uh, not the hybrid. You want you want missiles, so a Korax would be fine. Yeah, that, it, you would want to use a Korax if you're an alpha. Um, and then you can also... Actually, if you're an alpha, you probably want to automatically go up to a cruiser. You want to be looking at, like, a Caracal. Um, or... Alternatively, a Bellicose. The Bellicose might be a better Caracal now, which is a Mimitar ship. Um, the Bellicose here. But it is very easy to kind of switch between the starter, like the tier one stuff. Doesn't matter which race it is. It's very easy to like train towards getting into those ships. But weapon systems are very important and a little bit more something that you want to uh, pick one thing in specifically um, and I'm saying that you need to train light missiles because that gets you light missiles for small stuff and rapid light missiles for cruiser stuff um, and then you want to train medium drones medium we haven't talked at all about drones it's another weapon system a lot of ships kind of have these as like a secondary augment to their damage source secondary weapon systems um, Galente really like the drones so they generally focus more of them they'll have more bonuses for them but having medium drones is going to help you out and eventually i hate to talk about it right now um a ship that you want to be looking into is the gila the gila the gila the gila gila this thing this garista's pirate ship it costs a whole lot so we're gonna have to figure out how we can make that money but once you can get into this ship, it can do a lot very easily. It's kind of a broken ship. Um, it, alpha pilots can fly it. Um, working our way up to it, we'll probably be doing some Glinte, probably some um, Vexer, because uh, that gets some drone bonuses, or like the Bellicose or the Caracal. We'll figure out what we want to do, when we want to do it. Um, because again, training into those ships is, is pretty easy weapon systems are kind of the more important thing after that you want to learn some torps but that's going to be pretty far off like even learning just the light missiles is going to take a while and the medium drones is going to take a while long f into the future is torps and then heavy drones and then hams heavy assault missiles is what i would recommend and you want to kind of be focused more on caldari and galente kind of ships and then maybe some Mimitar missile stuff, but probably not. Yeah. The Bellicose might be better than the Caracal, but because you want to be more focused on Kaldari anyways, you probably just want to focus on, like, Kaldari and Galente. Um, for medium drones, I say the Ishtar or the Gila. For Torps, I say lots of battleships or bombers or and bombers. Heavy Drones is good for the Dominix, Rattlesnake, and Nestor. And Heavy Assault Missiles uh, just give you more cruiser options. So, that's the weapon systems I would suggest. You obviously can do things like lasers with the MR. You could do hybrids with kind of Kaldari and Galente. But that's more for PvP stuff. You could do projectiles, which I really don't recommend because they're highly advanced. Um, and like skill, like player skill. Um, and everything else is kind of like a, a smorgasbord of stuff. Um, one note is the Trigolavians use turrets, disintegrators. They're really quite good. They are on the more expensive side. So as a new person, I wouldn't really worry about playing the Trigolavian stuff either. Oh, actually, all of it's Omega. You, uh, uh, Trigolavian stuff is locked to Omega, so don't worry about that. What, in my opinion, is the jack-of-all-trades exploration ship? Um, any of them. <laughs> um, Sinesis? I really like the Sinesis. Um, for Kovab frigates, I personally like the Anathema the best. Uh, Buzzard is good, too. Um, the T1 exploration ships are totally fine and valid. I don't really like the Astero. I think it's too highly priced for what it does. Um, 
Oh, the um, metamorphosis is really good. I need to play with that more. So, hope hopefully that answers your question. What is ISK Interstellar Credits? It's the money in EVE. All right. This next assignment is going to test your nerves. We'll be sending you into a much larger and better defended pirate base. It is unlikely you will defeat their forces. Just put up the best fight you can before being destroyed. I'll provide you with a combat frigate, but you have to fit your own modules. I'd keep the fittings cheap. You're not expected to come out of this one intact. Although we do expect you to make at least one kill. Let me stress this point, Ethel Strong. We want you to kill at least one pirate and then hold out as long as you can. So you may not leave the area until your ship has been destroyed or by some miracle you survive the fight. Use the frigate I'm giving you, since if you lose your own, I will not be replacing it. And he's going to give us a Merlin. Um... I think 229 versus 181. Okay, so the Merlin's a little bit cheaper. Looks like Merlin is the cheapest. We could go out in an Ibis. Yeah. We're going to try and do this in, a, in an Ibis, which is just your Corvette, your starter ship. Take the miner off. Um, this is like 2000 isk, so let's put that on. Uh, oh, wait. Mm, we'll take this off. We want that for our other ship. Yeah, this will be fine. And if it's not fine, then, you know, we'll upship. Oh, um, can we talk about insuring? Can we insure this? Sh no, because it, it's too shitty. <laughs> so hopefully we can kill... Oh, they... Are forcing us to board a Merlin. Step one, board Merlin. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Uh, let's hop in this one because it's already unpacked. Check its fitting. Um, here, okay, here we're what we're going to do. We're going to right-click our Ibis, and we're going to strip its fitting. And then we are going to take its civilian gun, put it on here, and an afterburner, and then we're going to undock it. Oh, wait, now I can talk about ensuring. So if you right-click a ship, you can choose the Insure. You have to be in a station to do this. You can click Insure. And it says the insurance terms will be for 12 weeks. The contract is considered void if you repackage it, do a bunch of stuff with it. Um, but yeah. So you can insure ships if you think you're going to die in it, and it will give you back some of the cost that it takes to build the hull. All of your modules are not included in the insurance. It's just for the hull of the ship. So we can spend 50,000 isk, and if we blow it up, we're going to get 160,000 back. So that seems pretty good. If you ever get insurance, like, you would only always go for the platinum. Orb drive active.
Vroom, vroom, vroom. Warp drive active. Hey, bitch. You are forcing your viewers to watch an ad right now, so pause your fucking game. Alright. Let's kill this guy. All we got to do is kill one guy. Let's see, our optimal is 5,000. All right, so we're pretty much an optimal. Looks like we're doing a little bit more damage than he is to us. We're at 70. He's at 70. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's maybe orbit him. Alright. Yeah, we're doing good. We're fine. Orbiting is definitely the play. So our turrets have essentially better tracking than his missiles. Missiles use a different formula and stuff. Um, it re it re relies only on our speed and our like ship size. But in this case, we can pretty clearly see that orbiting is the correct choice. As soon as we get through his shields, he shouldn't have a whole lot of armor in hole. Riveting, truly. So, like, this is one of those situations where the time that we waste here, we probably should have brought more firepower because then we could make up the is that we would lose somewhere else by saving our time, right? Because we're wasting a lot of time using just the civilian gun, it's like, it's taking a little while. He 
He's got a ship that looks like a Kestrel, which is a missile platform. For It's a missile frig for the Kaldari. But his is in, like, Garista's colors. He's wanted. He has a bounty of 5,000 isk. Um, oh, we pressed T and then clicked on his um, thing to show his info. Um, whenever we kill him, we'll get 5,000 isk. And this will show that he's doing 100% thermal damage. And this is his resistance profile. And our guns, if we hover over them, we can see that we do 3 thermal and 4 kinetic. Alright, lots of terrorists. Time for us to get blown to high heaven. What in the high sec do we have going on here? We're doing a new player experience. So we'll be in high sec for a while. Because um, new players should not immediately go to null sec or low sec or wormhole space or Pochman. They should get their bearings in high sec. However, they should not stay in high sec forever, unless they want to. There's plenty of good things to do in high sec. But they shouldn't be afraid to travel further out. And hopefully we'll teach them good. The more dangerous and deadly of areas of space that you go into, the more lucrative the rewards are. Higher risk, higher reward. But it is also kind of skewed in that you can have safety in a area of space that's not Self safe, but because you are so large there, like a big null block, you can be pretty safe. All right. It appears dinner has been served. And that means I will be leaving you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. We did a lot of really cool, fun stuff. We made it through two and a half career agent mission paths. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. This will be posted on YouTube probably Thursday. Um, and as far as future streams, so here's the thing. Um... I'm leaving for Canada on Friday, but I need to prepare Thursday. So, and I'm probably not going to stream tomorrow. Um, so yeah, the next time I will stream will probably be on next Thursday. So I'm coming back next Wednesday, but that's a whole deal affair. So maybe next Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Sometime late next week, I'll be streaming part three of this. Um, and I may or may not make a YouTube video um, or at least plan one out. Yeah. But that'll be. Yeah. Okay. So late next week, I will stream again once or twice that like time frame. And then I will have a new YouTube video up the week after that. So not next week, but March. So April 2nd ish. Yeah, so expect part one of this series to go on YouTube tomorrow. Part two, honestly, I'm probably going to schedule it to go live on YouTube in a week's time. You were here, so you already saw it. Also, pro tip, you can just watch it on Twitch. Just It'll be in my like previous videos, watch it on Twitch. Um, but it'll go on YouTube next week. And then the week after that, on April 2nd or 3rd, I'll have a new YouTube video up. Which will probably be the Hidden Features of Eve part six or I might have a different video depending on how much I can think about video creation 
during my time away. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. It was super lovely fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. So uh, until then, peace out. And uh, let's let's find someone to raid. Um, oh, let's maybe go to Seasons. Seasons is part of Sad Squatch's crew. I think he's new either to the game-ish or newish to streaming or... It's one of those things. But I watched him like once before and I enjoyed it. Oh, are drops live? Have you guys been getting drops here? Yeah. Let's go to let's go raid seasons. Wait, Sir Nub, didn't you raid seasons? Was that where I was watching it from? Okay, did. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. See you guys <laughs> sometime and always feel free to reach out